That's yeah, because then me. you get to know the industry from the back. Ex- exactly. Pause, because <laughs> <I have> to... <laughs> the industry is a crazy place also. So people, the back is something you got to be careful with. <laughs> but then you get to, so that's so far you like from jump came in. From the back, pause again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, never mind. It's crazy that the answers nobody had I found when searching for myself. Let's toast to victory. Welcome to Chapman in with Buddha T. I am the Lord of the entire, Lord of the every, Lord of the jig, the Lord of the fit, the Lord of the crisp, uh, Lord of the shit. Oh my goodness, Lord of the fit, of course. Uh, shout out to Wendy, she got me right. Uh, Shade Game is the verdict, Timothy the boy, Lord of the light skin, baby daddies. Uh, we're here to chop it. Today we've got the legendary, I say legendary. It's legendary, right? I'll take it. I mean, yeah, come on. I, I don't introduce myself that way, but I'll take it. <laughs> you got the legendary Fred Mercury. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Oh, Fred Kayembe. Yeah, it's depending hot. on what on what I'm wearing that day. If I, yeah. wear, if I wear a suit, you know, it might be. Yeah, yeah it you, might. You might be have the... to be address me as Mr. Kayembe. I mean, <laughs> respectfully too. <laughs> Um, shit, welcome to Chopping It with uh, the Lord of the Entire. You said the Shade Game verdict should <laughs> step aside for, I'll do, hey, whatever you need, big I, dog. I, I've been summoned, bro. I had to honor the request, you know what I mean? Thank you for coming. Yeah, okay, let's do it. We appreciate having you here. Uh, and thank you for joining me in our apple juice endeavor. Uh, how are you, good sir? I'm good, man. I, I can't complain. I'm uh I'm tired as hell, but I'm good. Yeah, you yeah. you keep like a very like a very what is the word? The English is escaping me. Like a a low profile, very low tone, even when you talk, like just that's your style? Always has been? Uh yeah. I think so. I, I, I pride myself in not being a reactive person. Fire. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, I had a crazy temper. Shit. And uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't yield like good results for me. So, you know. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, so over time in life, I just was like, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I, I don't want to be a reactive person, you know. And so I've kind of taught myself uh, through many destructive to, experiences to, yeah. you know what I mean? I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. Yeah. Um, where are you from, actually? Uh, so I was born in Kinshasa in Congo. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I was born okay, in Kinshasa. Okay, export level. Yeah, I was born in Kinshasa Shout in out. Congo. Uh, my mom is from there originally. My pops is from there, kind of. Uh, he grew up in, in uh, Belgium. And okay. then when he was 25, he moved to Congo. Met my mom there. I was born there. My brothers were born there. And then, yeah, when I was like, uh, I want to say like, man, like two or three years old, we moved around a bit and then eventually pulled up in South Africa and been here ever since. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Wait, so at what age are you landing in SA? Uh, I may be like seven or eight. Okay. Yeah, yeah so I may be like seven or eight, like in the foundation 90s. Foundation years. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Formative yeah. years. Pulling up Formative. in Johannesburg. Okay. We That's out a, here, bro. It's a better word than the one <laughs> I used. <laughs> nah, I mean, You're in the office more than me, so you, sh- you should have better words. Like not, you, you use better words in communication. I mean, I had to, though. I didn't, I didn't know English. I didn't know any, any languages, so it's like... For real? Yeah, I mean... What my, do my, niggas speak out there in Congo? My, my home language is French. Oh, shit. Yeah, my parents don't speak a word of English. They, At all, still. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're not here. They're not here in in, oh, they in, didn't. in South Africa. So they were here for a few years. I grew up mostly with my older brothers and yeah. some of my other family that are out here. But like, they grew up their whole lives in in other countries, right? So it's like we spoke French in the household, and then um, I had to go to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you gotta deal with yeah. the English. 
Yeah, and then it's, it's immigrant parents, man. You know what I mean? Then they, you have to like apply yourself. They're like, yo, you're going to be the best at every single little thing. It's like, you're going to learn English, you're going to be the best at English. You're going to learn math, you're going to be the best at that. It's like, because yeah. the expectation is just like so much higher because you're starting off on the back foot. Yeah. Like, um, all African parents are the same, but it's, but you know, as far as like being somewhere The more that, African parents <laughs> are even more. Exactly, bro. You know, because you're in an environment that you're not familiar with. So mm. they're like, yo, you're not going to be a bum. You know what I mean? And yeah. so, yeah. And I say more African intentionally because I feel like South Africans, because of the the allure that we now mm. have of being South Africans, yeah. like we feel like we're, <laughs> we're, the, we're the new, what is it? We feel like we're the America of... Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, so it's like, we're, I don't think we're as... Af like, even when you say that, it's like, I feel like even the Nigerian kids, like, when yeah. they come out here, they, like, when they move here with their parents, like, the parents, like, yo, the yeah, school sure. and, the, like, the mats, yeah. the, this and that, it's going to have to go crazy. Yeah, man, because conditions are crazy out there in Africa, man, like, outside of, of, yeah. of, of Southern Africa. Not that, like, we don't have our issues here. But conditions are crazy over there. It's like, if you've ever been to Lagos, man, it's like, it's it's good as like just an excursion, bro. It's like, if you're feeling demotivated, if you're feeling like you have no purpose <laughs> in life, if you're like, go to Lagos, bro. Spend, yeah. spend one week in Lagos. I need right? to go it, out it, there. It's a really, it's a really, really like, sh shout out to all my Nigerian folks. It's a really, really tough place to live, man. Yeah. It's like, there's millions of people out there. Um, you know, uh, the story of a lot of African countries is just like failure in leadership, right? And so when you pull up to one of those places, it's like, and then you come back to South Africa, it feels like, bro, you know what I mean? It feels like I'm- It feels up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like I'm <laughs> doing primary up. school again, you know what I mean? And so yeah. you understand, you really understand why dudes pull up like Super Saiyans, like when they pull up yeah. to South Africa. Because it's Hell like, yeah. it's, it's so crazy. The conditions are so crazy over there. Mm. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, but yeah, the, the kind of immigrant parent mentality, like- tends to be like universal like if like yeah, anywhere in the world effects, yeah, anywhere facts. in the world like you you that uh conditioning is the same you know so yeah fine so where did the temper come from what was the problem i mean first uh, i mean i was i'm i'm lost of of four kids of four mm. boys so i had uh the the lost born privilege that's one Mm -hmm. And I think I was just a hothead, man. It's like I was like I was a hothead, bro. You know, I from jump or like nothing pushed you in that direction. I mean, I don't know. Um, maybe I mean I could talk to a therapist and 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 then I'll I'll give you some like more in depth answers. But but, <laughs> but but I don't know. I, but I, as far as you remember, that's just where you were at. Yeah, I I I I, I don't know why, but I've always been very. Uh, I've been extremely reactive to like disrespect for, for, for some reason. Like even when I was a kid, I didn't have like the vocabulary for it, but whenever I felt like I was being undermined in a yeah, situation, yeah. it's like, I'm one of those dudes that's like, you know, if we fight, someone's got to die. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like- You're we, the hurt people, dude. Yeah, we, we're going all the way. I'm not, I'm not like scuffling in the streets and then- Just to you know what check I mean? the then, hands yeah, out. Yeah, nah, and then we, like we <laughs> dap it up and leave. I've, I've always been- I've always You been don't believe in that? No, nah, I've, always, I've always been- I mean, in principle, I believe in it because I don't mm -hmm. think that people should kill each other. But I'm saying my, my natural like disposition is like when I snap into that, that zone, I'm going all the way. You know what I mean? I'm an, I've always been like an all or nothing person, yeah. which has served me positively in some ways. Yeah. But in other ways, has been really destructive. You know yeah. what I mean? So when I got to a certain age in my life, I was like, man, I can't operate this way. I'm saying if I if I find I, exactly if I want to be if I want to be successful at some of the things that I'm 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 passionate about, as like I'm saying, because there's no parameters with these things. It's like when you're like that, it's like you could be like that at school. You could be like that in the boardroom. You could yeah. be like that. It's like we see how that worked out for Especially Dame Dash as a kid. Yeah, it's like, oh, perfect example. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We when see, it hasn't been curbed until you are at an age where it's like, yeah, no one can even curb it. Yeah, now. exactly. I I really like this. Uh, uh, I think uh, Kanye did this interview. I think on the Breakfast Club a couple of years ago, and he said, mm. and they asked him. They said, um, Dame Dash accused you of siding with. Jay Z when the rock yeah. when rock uh, Rockefeller split up right yeah and he was the Dame was the dude who pursued you he was the dude that backed you he was a dude that you know what I mean yeah. that discovered you and um, 
he accused of being disloyal. And yeah, he just said, he said, yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm not even disputing that. He said, he said the, the thing was, is with Dame, Dame and I, we're really the same kind of dude. Yeah. And I felt like in order for me to go to the next level in my he life, I needed like to be Jay. with somebody who practiced poise, somebody mm. who practiced composure, somebody who used their brain instead of just like being hot-blooded and whatnot. So it's like, I, I'm like, I can relate to that uh, a lot. I, um, yeah, mm. so I, I kind of became more uh, mindful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You need that when yeah. you grow up. Um, so your brothers, they were how? Were, are they the same energy as you? Uh, or do damn. you stick out like... Nah, I, I'd say my brothers and I are, are pretty similar. Yeah. My brothers and I are pretty similar. Maybe not in terms of um, the optics. My eldest brother, he, he's an accountant. Uh, <laughs> Fire. My eldest brother, he's an accountant. I have another brother, uh, Jay. He is um in the agency and and marketing space um he's a genius uh my and then i i had a brother who passed away when i was younger um but it was four boys you know and i was the young, i was the youngest but but everything i was thinking about this the other day i was wearing this fly ass bathing ape jacket right okay and uh uh, I've had it since I was 13. I actually bought it from Stilo. Shit. Uh, when, oh, when, fire. <laughs> I bought it from Stilo when he was working at I'm a Keep Keep for, for, for Scoop. Uh, mm. When when um, YFM was in Rosebank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like pulling up there, you know what I mean? And my brother um, like copying this jacket for me. And I kept it all these years because it was for my birthday. It was real special. And I was... And this day I was I was rocking this jacket and everybody was just like, man, it's a flyer's jacket, flyer's jacket. And I remember driving home and thinking, yeah, that's a flyer, this is a flyer's jacket. <laughs> and and then I went and I started to think about where I got it, right? And I was like, oh, my brother got this for me. And then I went down this uh, rabbit hole and I was like, oh man, everything fly I have, everything f uh, fly that I know, like yeah. any positive attributes that I have that I've still held onto at this point in my mm. life, I've gotten from my brothers. It's like, yo, this nigga's the plug. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. All, like all of them, you know? Like I, my, my eldest brother was a, is a very strategic, uh, rational thinker. He's always kind of been, uh, you know, the, the structural foundation of the family. My other brother, I think that's where the creativity comes from. Um, the jig, that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just uh, uh, the mentality, practicing restraint. Mm -hmm. All these things, it's like I'm like yo, I'm I'm a product of that. I'm a product of like yeah. my older bros. You know what I mean? So, fire. Yeah, a lot of a lot of us have like that similar story where it's like if you have a big bro, then yeah. it's like yo, I got it from big bro. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Fire. What do what do what do people call you these days? By the way, I was thinking about this on the <laughs> day. I'm like, I'm 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 like yo, I met I met you when you were smashing. So in my head. It still registers. I, you know, I, you I there's, Bo there's Buddha T like, and Zynga, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if I know Buddha T. I, I don't know if I know Buddha, Buddha T. Is I, the podcaster. Okay. So if you've, you know, we won't assume that you've watched the show. Not everybody. Does, I watched the but, show. I watched you know, the show. If yeah. you have, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. that's who you're seeing on the thing. But <clears throat> uh, people call. I'm all three of them people. Yeah. So whoever is closest to your heart is who you can call me. But. I mean, they they do different jobs and they resonate in in different pockets. Yeah. But it's it's all a part of the same nigga, which I I assume you can relate to that because you've also seemingly tapped into different pockets of just yourself. Also, right, like right. have expanded outside of who you thought you were at some point, and you know, just yeah. that and that. Um, Facts. Well put. For anybody who may not like know you right because you also keep a certain mystique with your with your whole thing which that's intentional uh i don't know if it's intentional um i think i just focus on what i'm doing at any given time you know yeah what i'm saying is you don't you don't strike me as somebody who's like trying to sit right under the spotlight and be like hey look at me this is this is me this is what i do yeah uh you know i actually think i need to start doing that better if i if i <laughs> if i'm honest <laughs> you need a little bit yeah, more of that yeah. yeah i need to start doing that better but but i i think that i've always been concerned with like the integrity of my work man like honestly i'm not even right. trying to it's like at, at certain times it it's made sense for that success to live in the to live in the uh spotlight mm. and 
certain times it just didn't happen like that organically um mm-hmm. but i i i've just always been focused on like the integrity of my work first mm-hmm. and like if it so happens that i find myself sitting next to buddha t you know then we on baby <laughs> you got to be <laughs> you got to be ready to we here to stick it out yeah, cuz yeah. i'm a spotlight baby so <laughs> i i live this <laughs> yeah. i mean i mean we we we've known each other for for a long time for a long time yeah. um yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so what i was leading to is for anybody that's watching this right because i i do these types of uh, episodes to also put the culture on to who are the people that have you know had a hand in growing the the game to where it's been now like just give us a quick rundown of of the work that you've done and then we'll unpack some more okay. of who you are but just like a quick oh yeah you know how you just uh encapsulated me in the smashes zinga pura it's like that's what i've done uh uh okay let me see uh i think i probably start my i probably started like like when i was probably 16 17 mm-hmm. uh, uh a family friend by the name of simba and my brother started this thing called masters of rhythm this was like 2006 it was um i think to this day the biggest dance competition in the continent mm. that was like my introduction to the game i so i worked with shit yeah yeah i i i worked with you know it it ended up being a television show um yeah. you know uh which i ended up hosting kind of with lala hirayama but it was it was a movement that existed for about i don't know 8 to 10 years mm. during that period i was a teenager in high school during that period um i kind of worked with the organization and and i met a whole lot of dudes that would later become important in my story and i met slicker during that period yeah 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 uh, a whole bunch of artists all the dudes like the jrs and the keenans and the, you know everybody. and so everybody right during yeah. that period and then uh no moment of silence for lala hiriyama i mean Shout out to Lala, man. That's that's the homie. Yeah, yeah, that's the homie. I mean, there there th- th- there were a lot of people involved in that, so not to, you know. No, I'm just pop. saying, just as a, just as a specimen. Yeah, I mean, Lala is like, that's the homie. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm saying, Lala, Lala, th- that's the homie. She was a, she yeah. she 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 was a big part of 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 that time of our lives. I know she's like still doing the thing. Mm. um but yeah so 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 master's rhythm i think was the introduction was my introduction to the game mm. and kind of starting off in that space i was always really interested in uh in music so music was always in my crib uh where there was like my parents bumping that gospel music um or when my brothers got to high school and we all learned english and we were like we went straight into hip hop you know straight to hip hop right and so yeah so so my elder my older brothers with the wu-tang tapes and the nas tapes and the lauren hills and what so that was always in my house and so i was it was very very uh uh like natural for me it was a very natural entry for me and um i've always been a curious kid so when we had the cd's and the tapes used to read the sleeves and stuff and so uh mm-hmm. i started to write uh just uh for fun like write cd reviews cuz i had a homie oh i thought you were talking about raps oh no 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 you nah, never nah. rapped i mean you know i, I everybody <laughs> rapped yeah, yeah everybody rapped. i rapped in, in the way that like you know like when you 12 or 13 you recite people's lyrics or whatever i didn't really ever believe that like i could be that a rapper that you were a rapper thank goodness man what do you uh, <laughs> what do you mean nah i mean i would have been terrible bro it's like How you know? nah i would have been a terrible rapper man i just know i know myself i have self awareness which is something which a lot is of people which is key yeah that's yeah, key yeah yeah so okay. so so yeah so i was always really curious music was was always kind of like in the mm. fabric of my family and so i started to write cd reviews i had a homie who lived upstairs in uh the block of flats that i lived in and he was really interested in music too and we were always debate and so i started writing kind of like these like 100 200 word reviews on like things that i would uh listen to shit at what age is this uh i mean maybe like 15 or 16 That's you know fine. what i mean okay um and then uh yeah and then that kind of turned into you, you remember facebook notes back in the day facebook had like this thing that you could do like extended writing and it was like no i didn't indulge on that level uh okay uh, but but yeah there was there was a thing yeah, called Facebook I just posted snaps and I, kept it pushing I feel you man I mean you mm. when when you pretty you know what I mean that's <laughs> <laughs> Some of us had I to don't work. deserve <laughs> that I'm, 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 I don't I'm, 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 I'm messing with you I'm messing with you I feel you no nah, but but um but yeah so I started to write these these uh things that were like more extensive but they were just like my thoughts on 
on on on music and stuff. And yeah. then um, and during that time, I got interested in the local scene. Because I was like, oh, all of this cool stuff is happening. I was like learning about like Dr. Dre and learning about like what was going on in New York or whatever. I got interested in the local scene. Mm. I already had the connection because of the years before that. Um, and so then I started to localize that thing. And then, uh, yeah, in a, in a short amount of time, I was I was a contributing writer at Hype Magazine. This is like in its helm when the magazine is like... When Hype Magazine was is Hype like... Magazine, a physical magazine. It was... A, a readership of over half a million people all around the mm. continent. It was like the source. It's like remember it was the like CDs. source and double XL, pretty exactly. much. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like how everybody would get new music was through a uh, hype magazine because it had the CD pouch in, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. the joint. Fats, remember that? Which came with yeah. It was like it was, all the niggas. Yeah, everybody, man. It's like like so many South African classics like started on that CD because that's how people used to break their music, right? Yeah. And so I, I started as a co contributing writer uh, over there. Uh, I think this was like maybe 2011. I was like 20 or 21. Uh, and then, yeah, a, a few years later, I, I succeeded Simone Harris, who was my mentor as the editor in chief. Simone Harris. Yeah, yeah. Shit. It was it was Meezy before her. that, then Simone, mm. then me. Meezy, yeah, too. yeah, Meezy the God. These you were know, me these names are yeah, heavy yeah. names in the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I became the editor uh, in chief, and then I did that for about three years. Uh, moved on from Hype Magazine. Um, okay, maybe let's slow down right here and, okay. and okay. maybe do some because oh, you've done a lot. Clearly, you were about to continue and and still count. So. <clears throat> Masters of Rhythm. Did you dance at any? <laughs> Keep it a bean too. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can I can confidently tell you I was never a dancer, man. Ever? Yeah, my brothers were. I mean, that's how it yeah. started. They they founded a crew called Clinch Crew. Mm. Um, you know, and, and in the early days they did a lot of choreographies for the music videos. They yeah, they yeah. worked with Pharrell and Missy Elliott. Like these are all we're all teenagers at this time, you know. Because mm. um, a lot of the yeah, the yeah, train yeah. like into the game 100%. goes past like the dancers, the, the the love hip hop rap, and then become a dancer at some point, yeah. and then decide now nah, dancing is a bit soft. <laughs> I just want to fully just bust rhymes. Yeah, and the rappers did that, by <clears> the way. The rappers made made the made the dancers feel like they were soft, hundred percent. Yeah, it, it <laughs> was. It was. It's like yeah. I just saw pretty. Uh, post this week he posted a, a snap of him and uh, Touchline yeah in in what group were they in does anybody here know you guys aren't tapped in with the dancers it was one of those freeze frame was freeze, freeze frame? frame I think it might have been yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, so that's like yeah. that's documented yeah. Clive but all of them Clive the Phantom Steez you know like, Costa R.I.P. Yeah. Um, so many dudes like started a off in that of, community. I know a lot of dudes from Casper that community. Casper was a chiga machiga yeah, nigga. for sure. You know, that's yeah. also... I, I never did it, man. Like, I, I, I never did it. You didn't did. devil. I, I knew that for wasn't me. For some reason, I believe yeah, that. I knew that wasn't me, bro. Yeah. yeah. Did you always feel too cool for like, to do clown shit? Did it feel like clown shit No, nah, not at all. Not at all. I think like my, my natural, like the kind of kid that, that I was at school... <clears throat> Was like I was in my I was like well, primary primarily like into basketball, but like other than that, I was like in my books. I didn't really view myself as like you cool. know what I mean? yeah. I wasn't like in the in the in the scene like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I went to school and I didn't attend like a, a single social, a single party, a single. It's like you know I, I I didn't do it. I was just kind of. How did the babies feel about you? Uh, Keep it a stack I, too. You know I think I did all right because you're not a bad looking <laughs> man either. <laughs> I, I I think I did all right. I did mm. I did okay. But honestly, it wasn't my focus. Like you know, it goes back to what I was saying about like what your, the the African immig immigrant yeah, yeah, yeah. experience like, would be. You had things to you. yeah. You know what I mean? It was like I had no I had no room for like what yeah. you know they were called distractions or whatever. So it wasn't really my focus. It's like okay, yeah. So I never. So then that means the masters of rhythm experience yeah. pretty much just kind of gears you into yeah. like the presenter uh, for sure platform for sure yeah which you you dabbled was that the only presenting you did no 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 you i did, did more yeah, yeah yeah i was i was on you know vuzu out there for, yeah you for did vuzu <laughs> also with scoop and thomas i was almost about to know. say club anyway <laughs> <laughs> no nah, no nah, different dude <laughs> different dude <laughs> 
Who's the dude? Who's the different dude? Nah, I mean, they had like multiple Yeah, multiple but it wasn't guys, you. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> they had Kev all day. I know that. He yeah. said that when he was Different here. dude. <laughs> completely different. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, yes, that puts you on. Was that a, a thing of yours or did you just find yourself in it? Now, I found myself, I found myself there. What happened is, so we used to run these qualifiers like... Uh, Muscle Rhythm was like this event that would happen at uh, Standard Bank Arena. It would be like 8,000 people out there. But preceding Crazy. that, yeah, mm. pre, pre, preceding that, uh, we travel the, the the country, go to kind of the main cities and do like qualifiers for the for the mm. crews that would eventually perform at the grand finale. And yeah. we, I mean, we didn't really have, we didn't know what we were doing, like from a business perspective. Like I said, we were all teenagers. And so yeah. we would have to fund it <clears throat> until kind of, you know, Slicker came into the picture and assisted us. We, shout we, out to Slick. Shout out to he Slicker, always comes man. up as Forever. like shout out to the nigga who came Straight in and assisted. Up, like I'm his, telling you. his Ta- reputation is impeccable. Shout out that. to Slicker forever. Bro. Forever, yeah. big dog. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> shout but, out to Slicker. But 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 prior to that, we we mm. funded everything ourselves, you know, and we 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 um we didn't have like great financial literacy or whatever. And so uh there was a year that we couldn't afford a host. And so we all had to decide to split like the responsibilities and was like, yo, you're doing security and you're doing this and you're doing this and you're doing that. And they were like, yo, we need somebody to go out and like just announce the the crews as they come on stage. Yeah. And everybody like was like, yo, you're going to do it because you're the youngest. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll do it. And I did it. I read it out. And then that just became kind of the standard thing. And then uh, as the year progressed, it was like, okay, you're, you're doing the, the 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 actual show. It became yours. It was like yeah. oh, okay. I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it as as, as a presenting. As a presenting. <laughs> I didn't think about it as a career arc. I didn't think yeah. about I didn't know what that was. I just looked at it like very functionally. I was like, mm. yo, we need these people to get up. And yeah, so somebody gonna, has to somebody call them has out to here. Do it. Yeah. And I guess I'm gonna that's talk all it in was between, for you. you know. Yeah. And so and that, you that's You didn't what like it. go up looking up to like the Yo TV Not kids at all. and any of that. Not at all. Not yeah, because there's there's also that trail of <clears throat> the arc into the industry. Yeah. There's also the Yo TV kids that then become producers or yeah. musicians or models. Exactly. Or, yeah. You know, it's either the dancers or the Yo yeah. TV presenters. It, it, entertainment was never in my wheelhouse. Like when I was in high school, I my plan was to go to varsity and just like be in <clears throat> academia, like get degrees and like maybe become a lecturer or something and just like Shit. You know, I, entertainment was never in my wheelhouse. It was never in my plans. Um, mm. Again, like something that was introduced into my ecosystem because my brothers were those guys. My brothers were really those guys. Yeah, they so were really like, living I, it. Yeah. It's crazy how there'll be, there'll always be people who are like, yo, they were the guys and I didn't really think yeah. I was. And then you become the guy. Yeah. The, the guy that doesn't really think he's the guy then becomes the guy who's destined to be the guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's relative too because I think about, I think about, uh, my brothers are, and I'm like they are still the guys, right? Oh, like, that's like, fire! You know what I mean? They are <laughs> still fire. the guys. It's like I'm not yeah. pulling up over there with my chest out. Like, yeah, I'm, it's like it's not like that. I'm saying yeah. if all of the guys that I know, like a lot of the guys that I know, are not people that you know. They're they're people that operate in the shadows. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's why you have a proclivity to the shadows. It's um, like you. Yeah, I I I think that it the it. It dictates it like naturally. It's not. There's some guys who are just like, man, I'm avoiding the tax man, so you know, I'm, I'm not trying to. Have, <laughs> who are actually I'm literally <laughs> hiding? <laughs> yeah, those dudes are hiding. That's a different thing, yeah. you know. But 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 I, <clears throat> I I think that when you are when you are uh, kind of focused on your path, uh, when it makes sense and when it's necessary, um, you're gonna get that shine. It's gonna come in the way that it's supposed to come, mm. right? Because, organically, organically. Because even even with the presenter thing, like like. I was saying is like because it wasn't something that I had planned or I was working towards, it was literally out of necessity initially. And then I like all of a sudden I find myself on live television, right? Yeah. It was like honestly a really unnatural experience for me. It wasn't a time that I particularly look back on as being uh you, you, I, I didn't enjoy that time. Do you know mm, what I mean? It was okay. it, 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 it it was very counter to um like me, my personality, the way, the, the way that I did things, and, and, mm. and when I'm very grateful for the experience, um, and I and I and I can see it as a valuable experience now, kind of with the advantage of like 
you know, they say uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I look at that experience and I go, oh, that that was fire. You know what I mean? And it mm. was necessary for me to get to the next level. Hell yeah! But but during that period, I was like, man, that's it's. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Didn't I didn't like quite it, feel at home. Yeah, yeah. It, doing it, that. I felt like it was deterring me from the things that I actually wanted to do. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's I I everything happens <clears throat> like the way it's supposed to happen. True. Yeah. So then you're you're doing your your Facebook write ups. Yeah. And so who picks you up and says, "Yo, come do this for Hype Magazine"? So I knew I kind of knew Meezy uh, because. Hype Magazine was one of the partners that uh, we eventually uh, had started to work with for Masters of Rhythm. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of knew him and I kind of knew TTP, kind of knew uh, uh, Simone Harris mainly through my, my, my older brothers. And so I guess, uh, I think one day Meezy hit me up, might have been Meezy or Simone hit me up and was mm -hmm. like, uh, yo, I read this, this is random, but I read this like review that you did on this thing. It's like, would you be interested in contributing, um, like, I don't know, like a small little section to it? And I was like, uh, mm. yeah, bro, like, oh, of course. And then that thing ended up uh, becoming, I did a few of those and it ended up becoming like, hey, you could write your own column. And I was like, yo, I, I have a whole page kind of dedicated Shit. to myself. I call the column Hippolytics. Uh, <laughs> fire. I call the column in politics. I was a, I was a politics student in, in, in varsity. And so, okay, yeah, I was, I, I was really fascinated. Yo, you were... Deep in the hey man, I yeah, I, I you were trying to change the world. Yeah, I I I had all of that man. I was doing all of that right, mm. and so I, I I was always really interested in the way that um, I was I, I thought about that column like the 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 politics of rap or the politics of hip hop because there's all these things that are happening beyond uh you know just the guys who are holding the mics and the DJs and whatever and it's like so I I kind of formulated this um I kind of formulated this this column. And then yeah, I became like a like a staff writer, and I, and I did that for a few years. Yeah, under under Simone's tutelage. <clears throat> I hit that shot by myself, by the way, because uh, Big Dog here said it's a work day. For it's him, a work day, so. baby. <laughs> no, I'm not selfish. <laughs> so <clears throat> when the hype thing happened, yeah, was that was more your thing, right? Yeah, that yeah. was more naturally you. So Absolutely. that you were happy about and did actually love. And we're excited to do. Yeah, for sure. Because I was, I was always writing, reading, I, you know, and so that was like, I was like, I can definitely mm. do this. I can definitely do yeah. this and I can kind of represent and, and um, contextualize like hip hop in a way. Because I'll tell you one thing is like, in my household, people always, my, my parents always saw like hip hop as like secular music. It was like devil of shit, course, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. Exactly. So, 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 and I was like, I never had that experience with it. I was like, yo, I'm not ignorant i'm not a thug i'm not like worshiping the <laughs> devil i'm not but it's like this thing speaks to me in a way that like mm. i can't explain bro that it, nobody else had been able to speak to us in exactly i feel like that's what that's what it felt like for me 100 like, percent. there's a lot of voices i've heard since i've been here on earth yeah but the way that these these niggas address me yeah is like exactly. different and i hear them different bro. and they hit me in a different bro. place the, and, and, and I think what, what I, I didn't have the vocabulary for it at the time, but I think that what really imprinted on me was like, was like, like the esteem, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, I know there's like people talk about representation a lot, like right now, right? But, but, but mm. truly it didn't feel like, it's like whenever you saw like black people, like in the media in that time, it was always like, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, it, it was like, yo, you were, you were thug. It's like, yeah. you're going to cast the black dude. As like, and, and it was like, there were these dudes who kind of like, who looked like, so they represented that life, right? But they mm. were saying things that, to me, didn't reconcile with the way that people were portraying. Yeah, you know with what the mean? portrayal. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so the esteem, like when I would see a dude that I felt like resonated with, with, with the way that I viewed myself, but the things that mm. they were saying was, was, was just so fly, right? Or, you know, they were saying like, yo, I've lived your, com your community. Or they were mm. saying, yo, look at this crazy whip that I got. I'm like, yo, this is positive, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, and so kind of I, when I got that opportunity, I looked at that as like a responsibility. I was like, yo, this is like mm. a way that I can contribute to um, influencing the way that people view what we're doing. It's like, it's like there's... In 2000, and, man, in 2013, 14, it's like stuff that I wrote back then about how if you, we, we, we always give 
kind of like credibility and celebrate like these authors, you know, and these and these artists, you know, like Shakespeare and 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 all of these guys that we've grown up l- uh, learning about in school, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I'm like, I was like, yo, but Jay Z is that? Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's like if you have to break down uh, uh, what he's saying, Thanks. like uh, in terms of 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 literature, in terms of structure. In terms of, I'm saying all of these things. If you apply the same criteria, it's like the only difference is that he's from <coughs> Bed Stuy and he's from, and he's a six three black dude. Yeah, and he's but a, it's, you know what I mean. It's the it's, same thing. Yeah. And, you know, he he won a Pulitzer Prize now, like a like, which is a a, a a prize for writers. For writing, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. and so and so I, I look, saw that. yeah, I, it's crazy, man. I looked at that that opportunity like that. So when that came, I was like, ooh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm definitely down, bro. I'm doing this thing. You just gave me some too. That I'm gonna have to indulge you on later. Uh, <clears throat> so you're at hype, and when you're there, are you are you trying to become editor in chief, or are you just going with the flow? You're just living your life. Yeah, I'm going with the flow, man. I'm I'm so I'm so uh, just grateful to have the opportunity. I didn't even know that I would be getting paid. If I'm being real with you, uh, <laughs> facts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I I, I was working at Acker Joe. Mm. At that time, because I was <laughs> for some reason you look like a working Akacho. Damn, nigga. I, I don't take that as a compliment at all. I hated that job, bro. <laughs> but Akacho was doing his thing a bit. Like um, I can imagine you in the golf team. Ah, damn, I hated that shit, bro. <laughs> Why? I hated every second of that, bro. Hated retail or Akacho themselves? Uh, I mean both, but I, <laughs> I, I, I think Akacho, like specifically, man, it was a weird, like toxic work environment. But is it? But shit. but but I was working there, you know. Um, mm. And then I'll go to school because uh, I was a correspondence student. So I'll go to school, uh, you know, however many times I needed to go to school. And then uh, the opportunity came, like again, like on Facebook or something. And I was like, that's crazy. And so I left Akacho behind, and I was like, yo, I'm doing this. I don't care if I'm. Not getting paid. I don't care if I'm like I'm. Yeah, I, but fuck this. Yeah, I'm like yo. You're telling me that you're gonna pay me to sit in an office, listen to music all day, break it down, write about it, right. in- interview uh, uh, artists, Nas, Kid Cudi, Maloon Cool. Cat. I'm saying like, I'm like, bro, you don't have to pay me for this, bro. You know, yeah, I would do this. For I, free. I would do this for free. I was doing it for free, you know. And so, yeah, uh, yeah I was. I was living my life. It was initially. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a, you know, I want to be editor thing. It was That wasn't even something that I looked at it as wasn't a job within my reach. Mm. I was 21 years old. Do you know what I mean? So Crazy. In, in With my, your own column on yeah. Hype Magazine. A, a, editors were like, in my mind, like, 45 year old yeah, dudes old with people. suspenders yeah. <laughs> and that smoke tobacco pipes and you know what I mean <laughs> and, and cussed out their secretaries you know so so I, I didn't like Peter Parker's uh, <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly where you described that that's who I saw I'm like oh, okay I can see yeah. that dude. so so I mean for the first I want to say two three years I mm. that that experience was just like super enriching right it was just super enriching getting to sit down and understand the the the, the minds of of local and international artists, um, you know, how song structure works, what was mm. happening at the labels, um, having a little bit of insight into the Samas and how that criteria, it's like, it was just, I was mm. like a kid in a candy store. That's, that's yeah, what it was Yeah, because then you get to know the industry from the back. Ex- exactly. Pause, if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Pause, because the industry is a crazy place also, so people... The back is something you gotta be careful with. <laughs> but then you get to so that's so far. You like from jump came in from the back pause again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but yeah, like yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's so <clears throat> that's so important because when you come in from the front, <laughs> all of this is paused, right? I don't have to keep saying pause. <laughs> Extended pause. Yeah, extended pause, please and thank you. <laughs> when you come in from the front, it's like you have sort of like this missing piece yeah. that actually create. Like for me, right, I came in as a rapper and I'm just like, I just get thrown in the thing and it's like, oh, now we're stars. And it's like, so yeah. I only have the pop star uh, perspective of right. this thing. It's like, oh, it's just me in front of the camera. I'm the guy. Right. It's like, no, that's not how this thing works. It's like a whole... 
there's there's an industry that exists here for you to even be able to 100%. to be here and do this. Yeah. And so there's producers, there's A and R's, there's record labels, there's this and that and yeah. this and that. It's like when you when you're coming from the front and just go straight exactly. to the front, it's like you you then have to come back to the realization and the reality of oh shit, there's a whole lot of yeah. Things Revert. that build this. So you came in like with the perspective of right. this game exists because of these people that do all of this. Absolutely. My my experience was definitely in reverse. Yeah, that's yeah. That's fire. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's a better tool. Like that feels more equipping for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Because oh, I'm unprofessional. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, sound guy from Chapin. <laughs> My bad. Um, but yeah, 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 that's that's super equipping. That's that's. Um, I wish I had that. Yeah, that I it. I think it informs why I didn't have like the appetite for the limelight thing for the even, fame e- shit, right? even more because I was like, man, there's there's not really a lot of sustainability over there yeah it's right that's not the actual thing exactly if you yeah. understand the system it's like mm. you can make yourself invaluable um, um like 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 on the back end and so but but i but i think things changed for me really when um as far as my trajectory things changed for me in that space when i started doing the the, the hype mixtapes when when i started to be in charge of the hype mixtapes and mm-hmm. curating those it was like i was i was inside you know That's I mean? fine. What does yeah, that yeah. mean? Break that down. So, so I mean, uh, we we would how that would work back in the day is like I said, you know, there was no s- streaming, mm. uh, you know, and yeah, and we needed CDs back in the man, day, kids, and 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 CDs. That's like a hundred bucks, a hundred and twenty yeah, bucks yeah. a pop. You know, mm. it's like we didn't have money like that, you know, and so, mm. yo, piracy, bro. That's how <laughs> we did it, you know. But 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 <laughs> respectfully, respectfully, but but um. In terms of in terms of local music, it was even more scarce, right? Because it was like, yo, not you. Yeah, you, that's you, hard to find. You couldn't do that if you didn't have a label. Literally, there were there were mm. eventually there were guys who were slinging mixtapes and stuff, but he, but you could not have a an organized official recorded piece of music unless you were on a label, and then they put you in musica. But also, it was like eight CDs, and then yeah. the entire thing then was you just like catch it. exactly. And so mm. and so hype at that point, you know, I wouldn't say between two thousand and five and maybe 2014 during that period is how artists would break their records you know we we've been i I think about so many stories it was like uh coolie you know when he when he so he released mutak originator and then he had that three-year hiatus where he was just killing everything but you know in the back end he was working on another project and like Mm. trying not to fall into that sophomore slump right because yeah, it's like yeah. that that success that he had doing what he did was unprecedented at that time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like with Mutako and whatever. It was crazy. And mm. um, I remember when when he was Wait, working. unprecedented? Because there's like a double HP before that. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, I mean in terms of like like a, a, a generation, right? He took it like a step further. Double HP is like the foundation, bro. Yeah. Double HP is a foundation. I, in terms of like who he, Cooley was speaking to, and how he was doing it, because he was kind of that middle child in that generation. Facts, because facts, facts, he was yeah. he was between the double HP and the Keenan, who was coming up at that time. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So facts. so so um, yeah, he 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 was working on that with PH at the time, and P, P, me and PH used to speak quite mm-hmm. frequently. And he would just send me music and stuff that he was working on, and then he sent me to Ada one day, and he said, mm-hmm. "Yo, man, you know, Kuli's been working Ash. on this on this thing, and we're Oof. we're not a hundred percent about it, you know, because you know." The stuff that he'd done that had been successful was like real jiggy, right? It was, yeah, it, it was real. Yeah, jiggy. he was definitely a jiggy nigga. Man, like, he was he was going crazy. He for me, like coolly for me, even coming like me coming up. Yeah, he was like my flow coach. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The reason why I'm so obsessed with flow is for like sure. what Cooley does with I mean, flow. Like used to make me feel like yo, oh, this nigga is just different type like, of dude. Woo. He was a different type of dude, you know. But and so you can imagine like from that to. <clears throat> So I died, which felt like really kind of grimy. It was like, and and so they were saying, they were saying to me, like, yo, uh, he said to me, listen to this, man. I don't know how you feel about this. Cooley's not really, like, we're not sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've been workshopping this. It was risky. It was Very different, risky. especially yeah. for Mutuako. Because yeah, yeah. Mutuako sonically hadn't been that. Exactly. Hadn't been grimy. And so, and so, yeah, the, the, he, and he said, yo, we're not sure about this, but let me know how you feel. I listened to it and I freaked out. I was like, yo, this is crazy. And he said, yo, are you sure? And I said, yo, listen. 
give me the joint, right? Mm. Give me the joint. Let me put it out on, 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 on the hype mixtape. We'll use it as a litmus test. Do you know what I mean? We'll use it as a litmus test and see how people react Fire. to it. We put that thing on the, on, on the joint and it flew, right? And then that kind of... Oh my goodness, please save me here. Uh, I almost called you by your favorite guy. No, keep talking to oh, me. Oh. Like, you can keep chopping. Okay, I, got you. I just, uh, I don't know what I did here. Um, yeah, so so we put that on the tape and that shit flew, man. And and, and that kind of became the beginning of 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 the, the, the rollout, the unofficial rollout for his, the next phase of his career, you know. But kind of A&R too. Yeah, yeah. On, on your right? end. I, and and there, there are a lot of stories like that. There are a lot of stories. I'm, I'm saying kind of all the, 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 the artists in that era, in that era, Right up until I want to say like just that nasty C uh, uh, Reese Shane mm. Eagle era, I was like uh, the that that hype mixtape played such an integral role in 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 breaking artists and in, in shifting the paradigm in terms of like introducing what the new sound was gonna be. Um, yeah. You know, I remember meeting Malum Kulkat in 2012 when he was doing his thing with Dirty Paraffin, and 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 yeah. being really kind of confused and feeling disconcerted about the sound, but I'm like, yo, there's, <laughs> there's something here though. I don't know what yeah. it is really. You know, you felt like there was something there from Jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I was put on to 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 uh, to him by by you know uh, Scoop and Ricky and 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 and, yeah. and MK and, Scoop and, Super and, Tap. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Th those were the homies. They grew up together, you know. Mm, yeah. And so I was put on to him by there, and I was like, there, there must be something here. I met him in Brom somewhere. Yeah. You know, we had a little chat, and then he 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 gave me some music, and I threw it on there, and it began. I, I, I'm not, I'm not taking credit for for uh, of people's sounds or or people's success. I'm I'm kind of just painting the the ideas like. That was when I, I became really inside, right? Because yeah. I, I kind of learned about the foundation. I, or I was learning about the foundation and the behind the scenes of how the record uh, uh, business works. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of starting to form those relationships and, and understanding how, uh, you know, sometimes having a step, or not being the artist and having the perspective of having a step back, you can mm -hmm. use that as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to make things happen. Facts. And, and that was like, uh, a mm. pivotal part of of my somewhat story for me, yeah. better opportunity too. Yeah, because you know better and can do better. Yeah, and know better people. Because when you're the artist, you don't even know anybody. Yeah, exactly. All you know is everybody knows me. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and then you just walk around like that, which is a terrible position to be in. Mm. <clears throat> so, how does becoming it? Okay, so you've got your own column, which gives you your own page. Yes, and you're now in charge of the the mixtape. Yeah. So you're gradually becoming that guy here at Hype. Are you feeling that way or are you still just doing your job? Or I, And are you now, do you now, have you now inherited some aspirations? Like, okay, if I've climbed like this, maybe I can become. I, honestly, I never, I still never thought about it because I looked up to Simone so much. Mm. So, so Simone was was the editor right off the Mizi, and um, she was like, man, she gave me crazy opportunities, man. It's like the first time AKA was ever on the cover of Hype Magazine, I think this is 2012. She just let me run with that. She said, uh, I believe that you have the ability to go and, and, and run, run with the creative direction, run with the interview, run with... Um, putting this whole thing together. And so mm. I was like, man, that's crazy. You know, it was, it was his first uh, cover, uh, Keenan's cover, and it was my first cover, you know, and, 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 she, Fire. and she, and she had so much confidence. I was like, yo, the guidance that she offers is like, I didn't see a world where I existed in that space without her. It only really started to become a thing where, you know, she, she told me, she said, yo, man, I think I, I think I might be ready for a new challenge. I think I'm going to bow out. And even yeah. then, by that time, I was only 24 years old. I still wasn't 45 with the <laughs> tobacco pipe and the thing. I was like, I, yeah. I'd never seen, I'd never seen an, an a 24 year old was, yeah, yeah. So, in chief. So, 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 so it, it <clears throat> only then it started to kind of. I was like, oh, what would it look like if I occupied this position? It still wasn't a reality. I think that even internally, Hype Magazine is owned by a company called. Um, panorama publications and they have a lot of titles that you would not imagine to exist in the same repertoire as as hype it's yeah. like dog's life and cat's life and 
yeah, just like a whole lot of kind of uh, bizarre, uh, not not bizarre, but you know, it's it's a bit lift. What do you mean? These are what other magazines? Right. So magazines, oh, okay. magazines traditionally are owned by publishing houses, right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. they have uh, multiple titles, and so usually they they're related because the people that run the company have expertise in that certain field of discipline. Okay. And so and so w- hype was like a was like a a, a standout. Mm. You know because they didn't have any any expertise in 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 that specifically. Hype, hype had been acquired by another publishing house that liquidated a few years ago mm. and so was now standing here and so I I didn't have the greatest relationship with 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 the publishing house. Mm. Um uh, <laughs> honestly I didn't have the greatest relationship with the publishing house what what a code uh i mean just cuz i was i was not the like archetype i was not like the the traditional like quintessential person yeah. that worked there i was like young i was like a black kid i was like pulling up there with like the the hip hop vibe yeah, yeah, you know and yeah, they were yeah. like bro this dude ain't you know what i'm saying he's Why is he's he cool here? to have yeah. around but it's like it's not a serious consideration like for this guy to mm. to to take over the job um and so but i think what what convinced them uh, uh, e- eventually was uh they we we during that time we had that super controversial hype 50 issue uh yeah uh, where you guys did your top 50 yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and and so i i, I think kind you of put me at like 49 or something <laughs> <laughs> you still remember the number <laughs> or something you know something up you there. said or something like, you 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 had written written somewhere on the wall I'm like, like oh, okay <laughs> uh uh but yeah so that that whole thing <clears throat> happened and for whatever reason i became kind of like the beacon or the mouthpiece of this of this controversy <laughs> and um yeah. yeah and 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 so i was the guy on the on the radio stations you know kind of you know defending the the position you had to of go the, out there and fight of the publications and walking into ifm with 30 rappers in there waiting to beat me up and uh you know guys yeah, straight remember that time he was intense yeah. <laughs> was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah i man i walked into to a radio at season scoop i walked into a radio station one time and i'm like no exaggeration there was 20 rap i remember morale and and tito yeah, and Slicker had and like, up in like arms. it was black they were like in there i was like whoa that's just, this is crazy you know yeah i remember um, Slicker crying about us being in the top 50 like these guys are new <laughs> how like these top 50 guys <laughs> then when i asked him on the pod he's like no i didn't say i'm like Slicker. i remember him was it like why does Slicker feel this way yeah yeah and yeah. also you guys put us there 40 whatever <laughs> like you guys had i think kinex a few numbers ahead of me and yeah. me somewhere up there i was like yeah I didn't feel a way. Did you speaking of top 50s of course uh, TD just put out his. Did you see that? I did see it. I did. Uh uh my homie Cabello it? sent it to me from yeah. shout out oh, to Oh yeah yeah cuz you you and Fred uh <laughs> Yeah yeah. And you yeah. niggas are my dog. similar breed actually. It makes yeah. sense that you niggas are Yeah, we talk every day. Our boys like every that. single yeah. day we you talk. We just argue all day. Cut from the same cloth actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I did. I, I saw it. Mm. You think it was cheeks also? Uh no, nah, I mean I I responded to Cabello. He's the only person I had the conversation with. I I, I said yeah. I don't think that we have fifty rappers to to top to, fifty to, to, right to, to consider this conversation a real thing. Facts. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm that's I'm, probably the best response to this whole thing. Yeah, I mean you can name fifty rappers. You can, but you know what I mean? top fifty. We yeah. don't have a top fifty. Yeah. Top, top or best is a like relative term, I guess. So it's like that's how we're doing it. But it's it's I I think it just it speaks to like the immaturity of the game. And when I say immaturity of the game, I mean how, how long old it is, exactly yeah. how long we've been around, right? You, mm. it, in my opinion, you can only really start calling it an industry from and and not to invalidate what guys did before, but they'll tell you themselves, you know, like like. But you could really start calling it an industry from like the 2010s. You know what I mean? I, and, and to keep it a bean. Yeah, I'm, I, and I, and when I say industry, I'm talking about commerce. Do you know what I mean? I'm like you. You Fair could really all, all the dudes who laid the foundation for us. You know, respect them, and they'll it was they, groundwork. The groundwork. They'll yeah. tell you that themselves. You know, and so yeah. I'm like, it's it's. I, I think we're focusing on the wrong thing there. You know, people mm-hmm. are gonna someone who's at number thirty five is gonna look at that thing and go, Yo, there's no way. <laughs> this homie at 21 is better than me. That's not the conversation we're having. Yeah. I, the, the way I look at it, what I said to 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 my homie, I said the way that I look at it is, 
if we had to have a national team, right? If if there was a World Cup of rappers, mm -hmm. right? And then we we and every uh, country has to present their their uh, team of 30 or their team of 50, mm. right? Take any top 50, uh, any version of a top 50 list in South Africa, and then would would we as a nation feel mm. confident and represented in putting any top 50 there? I'm saying there's really only like, <clears throat> if, if that caliber is like- It's like 15. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when we talk about yeah. those guys and it's like, I don't want to undermine the contribution that some of these people mm. have made. I'm saying some of those people really took us there. You mm. know, some of these guys really took us there. And I feel like we're undermining that a bit by, you know, putting them on a, on a thing with whoever's yeah, yeah. at 45, you know? Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. I don't know like, who's at 45 <laughs> on the list. This is not, <laughs> this is not specific. So you're I'm, saying that representation would be like a, a Bafana Bafana representation. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. We'd I'm saying, go out there and look bad. Do you know what I mean? I'm saying in the history of, of, mm. of, of South African rap music and, and our history is not extensive. And mm. so we, it should really be a conversation around like, like who, who are the people that we feel uh, 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 shifted the paradigm. Who are the people that, you know, uh, w when we look at their careers, we can separate the game between before they arrived and after they arrived. You yeah. know what I mean? Who are the people who are so influential? That it's like it's it, it, we can get to the nitty gritties, but that's not the conversation. But we can't do the top. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we could probably do a top ten at best. You know what I mean? Yeah. 10. Respect to Tilly. You know, respect to Tilly. Yeah. I, 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 that was of just course, my opinion. All yeah, respect yeah. to Tilly. Yeah. Tilly is. Uh, is a great individual who holds his ground in in the culture. He's this is it's never about the actual Absolutely. person who put together the list. We just talking about the list. Absolutely, yeah. So y'all's top fifty caused, uh, and this was this was the first list, first right? list, first yeah. South African list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whose idea was that? I mean, it was it was the the, the editor at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's. I mean, we had a team, but we were so why that came about is because. Um, it was in celebration of Hype Magazine's 50th issue. Okay. Right. And okay. so there were all these 50 themes and, yeah, you know, yeah. and so they were like, oh, this would be a really good thing. No one's ever really acknowledged. And and really it came from a good place, right? It was like, of course, you know, it was, it, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't supposed to be, you know, contentious or controversial, you know, controversial yeah. or anything. It was just like, hey, we've, we, the, we, we want to acknowledge really even 50 back then was a squeeze. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it was it's like, a it's stretch, like, yeah. Exactly. And it, so it was like, yo, we want to acknowledge everyone who's contributed to the success of Hype Magazine yeah. because it's held in such high esteem in terms of representing hip hop as a culture. And so, yeah, that's where it came from. And then it kind of started. I was I was still a youngin there, so I didn't really have a lot of uh, input. You know what I mean? As oh, far as that, 50, I, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know like uh, Golden Shovel and... And and yeah. at the time I didn't know do me. I didn't know I didn't know these dudes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't know them personally. They're not from my era. Um, but it happened. Yeah. And then because I was kind of like, you know, the burgeoning guy and and uh Simone also was like heavily pregnant at the time. So she she literally could not me. I was like, I was like, Yeah, I'll, I'll go over there and talk about it. I was yeah. like, because I didn't see it as something controversial. I just thought I was gonna get there, I was gonna talk you to people and say, Hey really guys, we're celebrating <laughs> <laughs> we're celebrating the culture, bro. It's like, yeah. you know, and um, it didn't turn out that way. And But niggas, yeah, it is what it is. felt the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 is, it is. And you, do you think that <clears throat> the culture of making lists has kind of come from that? Because, I mean, publications now, it seems like whenever there's a list being put together, it's more so for for the reaction than than the actual merit or then the actual dapping of the people you're putting on the list. It seems to kind yeah. of be about the the discourse that yeah, comes yeah, with yeah. lists. And and you know what? I don't necessarily think that that is um, something bad either. It, I, it isn't. I don't I think agree. it's something bad as long as it's done responsibly. I think the, mm. the, the main thing for me is, and this is maybe ironic because um, Slicker that day that I went to the studio gave this like really big spirited speech about how we're letting the wrong people represent us. He was talking about me. <laughs> talking about uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and yeah, so so maybe this is a bit ironic, but I but but I think that it's we we it's fine if it's done responsibly. And what I mean by that is like we give we give anybody the 
the the the the the power and the platform to just like to just, to just speak play with the to culture. just say things or whatever mm. and and I mean I was I was I was li- I listened to um your podcast where you had uh, uh Rashid here, Rashid right? yeah and I was like I mean you know I know Rashid right yeah he he was actually in that room too that day yeah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> when uh, you guys were making the top fifty no 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 he was oh, he in was the room in, of of yeah, people yeah. who were un- yeah, yeah pleased yeah he was there <laughs> I, I think that might have been the first time I met him. Okay. Um, but but I mean I know him personally, but it was like there's some things that he said that I was like I was like, yo man, who who do you represent? Like what faction is like standing <laughs> next to you? You, know, you, you what you, for you, example you, you speak like, with so much authority. I, I, I mean I thought it was weird when he made that pretty ugly comment, you know, the the when he was like your pretty ugly is about to drop and it's gonna do nothing. It's gonna do nothing. Yeah, that was a bit wild. Yeah, I I I I'm I'm like, yo, I don't know what he's I, I, what he's basing that off of? I know what he's basing that that, that off on. I I think like, so the one thing for me is just to quickly come to the defense of 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 pretty ugly and what he's done, what he's contributed. I'm like, mm. he uh, pretty dropped that project last week Friday. I mean, doing a million streams in a few days is not nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. challenging. I mean, in this three album trilogy, I'm saying challenging rappers to get back to their pen. And bringing esteem back to lyricism is not nothing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Being Fire. being uh, 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 part of the foundation that helped to transition these new school rappers right now. It's like I, I don't know if you know, but it's like we we we've had we have rappers and and producers and and artists come in and out of the studio all the time. The reverence that 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 pretty has from this current generation, yeah. right? Is is he's that nigga? He's he's that dude. It's yeah. it, 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 it's not nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, 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 so I, I, I'm having a concise three album rollout that's conceptually superior, right? That that it is too. Do you know what I mean? That that has mm. the impact that it does, and you can tie a nice little neat bow over it. Is not nothing, right? And mm. so I, I, and so I'm going. I feel like that's irresponsible. It's an irresponsible comment. That was very right? irresponsible to it's, say. It's yeah. it's 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 short sighted and it, it it dismisses and 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 here's the thing: is like he he maybe might not be a fan, which is fine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, but which but, is what I took it as. That's why I was like, yeah. Cause that can't. There's no. There can't be any depth to that no, statement. No, not that at means, all. It means you just don't like what pretty does. No, and that's what I'm saying. That's, and, and that's okay. And and what I'm trying to say about that, the point I'm trying to make about that, because I don't mm. want this to become like a pretty thing or whatever. But I'm saying mm. the point I'm trying to make about that is like, bro, I'm I'm 33 years old, right? Mm-hmm. There was a time that I was 23 and I was running the streets, right? Yeah. I mean, you know that because occasionally we'd run into each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. During, during I've that seen time, you outside, right? Yeah. And 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 so uh, it, it's really important to. At some point, have the, the 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 presence of mind, the awareness, and the humility, because that comes with with mm-hmm. with with progression, right? And and the humility to understand that at a certain point you're operating outside your your age means that you're operating outside of the audience that's being targeted over there. I have no business yeah. being in a mosh pit at a major D show. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and all that to Major Steve. And your comments about Major Steve would probably be skewed exactly. because of that. Because of that, one yeah. one 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 hundred percent, right? So, I hear you. so 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 I'm just like, yeah. What what faction do you represent? You know, when <laughs> when 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 you speak like that, yeah. you know, um, uh, I I could sit here and tell you like, yo, I didn't, I haven't listened to the new X Y project, or yo, I'm not a fan, or 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 whatever. But if I mm. sit here and speak with authority and 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 or, mm. or feign authority and 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 it's, it's like what's you know what I mean that's what I'm talking about when mm. I when I speak about irresponsibility and yeah. the power that we give people I'm like yo Rashid bro it's like you're 45 my G do you know what I mean you're 45 yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> you should be doing 45 year old things do you know yeah. what I mean you you rock the you know open toe Havana's with the three quarter uh, 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 cargo shorts we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? It's you know, like it's, it's not like, that type of time it's not that anymore. Type of thing, you know, you have the Steve Rocco flow. We don't do that. You know what I mean? On Saturday nights, you bump your Run DMC and yeah, and, we're not and, and, that. and you know what I mean? You recite the Constitution to the beat of Africa Bombada and and you know what I mean? Like eat your vegan snacks or whatever. It's like it's it's cool, bro. Oh, love. Yeah, do your thing. Because you're 45, bro. Yeah. Like that's what you're supposed to be doing, bro. But you 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 don't represent the patrons that part with their hard earned money to go to the Risa fake, bro. You you Facts, you, you, yeah, you, you, yeah. you don't you don't represent the the dudes in the mosh pits at the at the Blackie show. 
Mm -hmm. Bro, you know, it's like, yo, what did Blackie do? It's like, you don't represent them. You're not outside like that. That's yeah, why yeah. you don't know. You yeah, know, yeah, you, facts. You know what facts, I mean? Because yeah. when you, he said with us, it's like, Yeah, wait, it's what? like, yo, you What does that even mean? I'm, I'm telling you, bro, you don't, you don't represent the, 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 the nasties and, 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 and Reese's and them. You don't represent it. Mm. You know, and so and so. I mean, that's a really long-winded way of saying it's a it's a it's a it's a really long-winded <laughs> long way of saying yeah. fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what I mean. I don't I don't want to be. <laughs> I don't I don't want to make I, I don't want to make this, this, this that's a so thing, but 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 I'm saying like, bro, it's mm. it's it's a good thing that there are subgenres that emerge um, and that things sound more and more different. Than what it originally, than the foundations really. Facts. It's it, it's a good thing mm -hmm. because that's the natural way of human progression. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like saying like that that kind of rhetoric that people say like that, that we equate what is the original to being the best, and that's just not true as a principle, oh. right? It's like it's like if that were by that, by that by that logic, right? Yeah. We should all have iPhone threes. Yeah, because then that's the best iPhone. Exactly. What yeah. would have been the that's reason? That's the most original iPhone. You know what I mean? It's like that's when that's the true essence yeah, of iPhone. That's when iPhone, iPhone was like, iPhone. Come on, <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. By that logic, it's, it, it, it's like that is the natural cycle mm. of 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 the the development of human civilization. Is that is that some? And that's not to say that like people are not above reproach and that and that critique doesn't have a place mm. uh, 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 in this discourse anymore. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying. How it, it works. It should be responsible. It, it should be responsible. How yeah. it works is sometimes like we we accept something, something happens, but it's like that's how we learn, like, oh, that's not the way. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This the system is is self-regulating. The mm. system is self-regulating. It's not two or three or four people who are gonna sit down and tell us like what we should do and what we should not do. It's like, <laughs> yo, it doesn't go down like that. that. With that said, uh, to close the Rashid uh chapter. Do you, Stogie said there's a difference between uh, an OG and an yeah, just old. Yep. Which, according to, in I mean, in terms of Rashid, which one do you lean more into? Does he does he qualify as an OG or is he a nigga that's just old? So I'll say this: seniority doesn't automatically afford you people's respect, bro. That's <laughs> so what you're saying. It, it doesn't afford it's you people's respect. Let, 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 let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Yeah. Think, 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 think about, think about. Uh, Someone that you don't respect. You don't have to say the name out loud. Think about someone that you don't respect, right? I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying one day that person is going to be 50 years old. Yeah. <clears throat> like, are you going to respect them on the basis of, oh. of, of their age? I'm like, you, no. you, 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 the reason I mentioned humility is, is that I'm in the studio occasionally at, at Stalo and we work with a lot of talented mm -hmm. artists and, 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 and producers and composers and, Tyson Sibitelli will walk into the studio and mm. Lord Cares will, will, will be there and Shooter Coombs and 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 the Mars babies. And it's like it's I'm I'm these these guys are 23, 24, 25, whatever, yeah. maybe a different generation than myself. Like the humility is important for that because I recognize that I can learn something from Tyson. Yeah, that I can you learn can something from Cares. I can learn facts. something uh uh from Kindly Nash. You know what I mean? Is mm -hmm. is is and, and that's what I'm saying. I'm like the I'm Man, so you know, uh, respect so me, and I've been crazy. in the game. It's like <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm responding that way because, mm. like I said, I don't want to make this a Rashid thing. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. I agree fully with Stogie's take on that. It's like there's dudes that's old, and then there's dude that put in the work, bro. There's mm -hmm. dudes that put in the work um, that are respected, um, that have foundation, that have credibility. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I respect that. That's what I respect. Yeah. I, I can respect that. I respect that. Yeah. That's fine. You, you you took care of that uh, very well. Where we were was <clears throat> so now you're taking the fire as as the nigga who put out the list. You're now this this is before you become the editor in chief. So to let's maybe just try and wrap up our hype um, yeah. chapter. What is what's your your biggest moments as the editor in chief? Like where. The things that hype mm. was doing, it's like the credit, mm. you know, obviously we don't come out doing things for credit, but mm. it's like the credit comes, it's like, yo, even when you go to bed at night, it's like, yo, I put, to, I put that together pretty yeah. well. I I think that, uh, I think there were, prior to me, there were three editors and um, my focus when I got on was, because I, I got on during that really, 
like heavily transitional period in South African hip hop. I feel like every second day, whether it was on the radio or on television, or if you were in the streets in Newtown or whatever, people were having the conversation of, you remember when that conversation was very prevalent of like, what is South African hip hop, right? And that, yeah. that, that conversation always followed, <clears throat> uh, always followed, was always followed by, are we rapping in Vanak or are we rapping in English? And does, yeah, yeah. does rapping in Vanak mean it's South African? Does rapping in English mean it's not South African? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I think that because like a lot of people who were introduced <clears throat> to hip hop in that era, it was mostly international stuff. Like you said earlier, it was for me, I didn't make that distinction. It wasn't like if it's in English or if it's in Zulu or whatever, it's like, I, I was like, it's the voice. It's, it's the spirit. Hip hop has like a spirit that like, definitely when you hear it, man, it's, it's the soul in right? the deliverer. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, and so I was, my, my whole thing was like, we, we're not going to know what it is if we don't explore it. And where, how I implemented that strategically was like, I am going to do everything in my power to put on as many people as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. And when, when I, when, when I, when I think about it and I, I'll, I'll just give you like two quick things. It's like, I, when, when, when we did, I can't remember what year this was. It might've been 2014 when we did, uh, one of those mixtapes, DJ Fanatic was doing when he what was kind of the DJ mixing the thing. We'd always shout out to we, Fanatic too. His shout out to Fanatic, culture yeah. too. We we we'd always collab with the DJ at the time, you know, because they'd mix the whole thing and and yeah. and so Fanatic sent me a bunch of songs. I heard the song, and I was like, "Yo, this is crazy. Who is this person?" And he said, "Yo, I don't know." And they kind of just sent it to me in my inbox and da da da. So I said, "Yo, please see if you can get me the the contact person." Um, he could he couldn't get me the contact person. I'm on Twitter. Yo, man, I'm looking for MDB. Where you at? Da da da. If you, if anyone sees this, da da da. You know. Mm -hmm. Eventually, one day, in my email, I see, hey, man, I'm the guy that you asked for. Um, I said, oh, cool, man. Let's get on the phone. Got on the phone. He says, I'm, I'm like, yo, where you at? You need to come to Joburg right now. He goes, yo, I'm, I'm in Clark's Dorp, You know. Uh, and um, I said, yo, what are you doing? He's like, it's second break. I'm like, what you mean? Bro? <laughs> Crazy. I'm like, what you mean it's second break? He said, no, you know, I'm at school, you know, I'm hustling, I'm doing da 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 da. Uh, you know, long story short, that was my Glera door boy, mm. right? Um, my Glera, he 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 went by MDB at the time. And uh I was the first song that I heard of his, I was like, I, one, I can't believe it's a kid, right? Yeah, he, he when always he says had, second break, I'm bro. sure it's like, wait, what? <laughs> he always had so much presence in how he laid. Yeah. His voice on the music, it was like, this dude takes up all the space. He was, he was smart beyond his years in how he structured songs. He was, mm -hmm. he was insane. So, but, but he, he uh, I, I got on the mm -hmm. phone with him. I took five of those joints, put them on the mixtape. And every, for a year and a half, for every single uh, mixtape, I put a Maglera Doughboy uh, joint on there. Fire. One of those years, I had Cooley come to the office. I was talking to Cooley. He was starting My Throne Records at the time. Mm. And uh, I think he only had Nozzi. And, uh, yes. and, I, and I said to him, I found your next artist. Fire. He said, he said, he said trust me, I found your next artist. I gave him an MDB CD. I said, yo, whatever you do, make sure you listen to this. Whatever you, I called Cooley for three months. Every other week, I called like, him for three months. Jammed, I, had, <laughs> I had nothing to gain from this. I was just yeah. like, yo, this, uh, that's what I'm talking about, like the, the South African team, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going, this is for all of us, right? Yeah. And so... Like we need this. This yeah. kid has to be exactly a, has to come exactly. out in this and thing. That, yeah. that didn't end up materializing in the way that uh, I wanted it to materialize. But it's mm. it's a really it's really creepy sometimes how the universe works because they made it, met each other independent of me and they realized like Kuli so I, I think I saw Kuli at the backstage at the VMA Awards or something one day and he came to me and he said Fred you'll never believe it. I at said, the I, VMA Awards. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, he, what? He said, yo, you, you remember that kid that you were calling me about for like a year? He said, yo, this dude pulled up at my crib. I don't want, I don't want to talk street shit, but it's like he pulled up <laughs> at my crib, you know, and something was happening. I met him. He, we started hanging out and started recording. And it's like, it turns out that you're the, he's the same dude that, mm. you know, um, and so, and, and so things like that, or just even like, you know, Fire. Uh, uh, you know, with Nasty C, you know, Nasty C, when he came with Juice back. Yeah. You know, every for since 2016, I think it came out in 2016. Every single person, there's not a there's not a week that goes by that I don't encounter someone in the streets and they go, yeah, he had that line in there where he says, "Fred Merck told me your favorite rappers are hurting me." And people people ask me like, "What did you tell Nasty?" 
Yeah. Like, what did you tell me? To this what day, they tell, tell me, me, what did you tell Nasty? And I was like, it's not. Because he also says something that Scoop told him. Scoop also must come answer here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you guys it's, were talking crazy about us not, to Nasty. Not even, it's, not, it's not even that deep. Honestly, it's yeah. not even that. I don't know. I can't it was just a Scoop. bar from the kid, though, yeah, too. I can't even speak for Scoop. But what that was, was one of those things. I also found Nasty C when he had Price City. A year after he dry, dry, uh, dropped Price City, it was a link on mm. Twitter that I I would I would frequently do that. I clicked into it, listened to it, blew my mind. And I said, I have Nasty to find this kid. was very mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. the it first was... time you hear that kid. Like, Ridiculous. What? Ridiculous. I looked for him for months, couldn't find him. He was 16 in KZN somewhere doing. Mm. It's like nobody could give me any answers. Um, and then mm. eventually he was part of some campaign, some Blackberry campaign or something like that. He was, yeah. he won a spot. And... Um, yeah, I, I ended up kind of linking up with him and, and, and I went to this show, like this international show, and they, they asked me, yo, who's, who's the best rapper in South Africa? And he was, he was obviously unknown. And I said, nice to see the best rapper in South Africa. I know no one will know who he is because dudes are scared. Mm. I said dudes are scared. And I, I, he's the boy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. Price City Nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. And, and, and so what had happened in that period was that I had the music and I and I I went to a couple of prominent rappers at the time. Mm. I sat with them or I sent it to them and I said, "Yo, trust me. Yo, hey, trust me. Hey, hey, trust me." And every everybody responded positively. Yeah. But it was like the you know, it was like, "Yo, I, we can't let this happen." Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, "We're not going <laughs> to move on." Yeah. It's, it's like, "Yo, we can't we <laughs> we, we, we we can't let this happen for whatever reason." You know, I, I made maybe like a bit of an inflammatory com comment or whatever, but I was just like, and so what what had happened was one day I came home and I pulled my Twitter up and I was trending and I was like, some shit went down. I'm, I, I'm not trying to, you know, as someone put me in some hot water and it ended up being that this uh, clip of me that was whatever on Channel O speaking about Nasty C had uh, caught fire in case it ends because nobody, up. yeah. And then through that, he found me and then he sent me a message and he was, and his message said, <laughs> his message said, who are you? That's what his message said. <laughs> he DM his message said, "Who are you?" You know, and and, yeah. and that we we struck up the relationship in, in, in that. Part. I mean, he just took off, but it was like my kind of like concerted effort in. I, I, and I was like, there, there's millions of stories like that, right? Mm. But I think that to close that chapter, I was just I, I'm I'm really grateful for the opportunity to influence uh, uh, culture in that way during that period, and 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 also. Um, to have played a part in, um, uh, you know, making sure that like behind the scenes, these these artists that define this generation of music mm -hmm. um, were were given the the, the platforms that the we platform, now know they yeah. deserve. You know what I mean? And they did. Yeah. So shout out. Yeah. There's people. a whole lot more. You know, there's there's a whole lot more. Mm. But I'm saying that that was. The opportunity that that hype afforded me in in, in allowing me to occupy that position mm -hmm. and and uh have my tentacles like you know in the game like that fire and yeah. putting niggas on their first covers you yeah. know because yeah. you put me on my first hype cover damn that's true on the that's crazy what was that that was a youth day special yeah like the leaders of the new school the, thing yeah leaders of the I new school that. damn that's crazy it was me kid x scoop and i think Stilo. the repertoire Stilo. yeah and then, and then Larry. Larry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That was crazy, too. I was like, oh, shit. I'm a leader of the new school. I was like, oh, okay. So <clears throat> you just uh, walk out of hype because you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I walked out um, with no prospects. Uh, two main reasons. One was I felt like I'd hit the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I never want to be retired, man. You know, it's a it's a it's a skill to know to know when to leave. You know, so, facts. So um, that was one one reason I felt like I hit the ceiling with what I could do within that uh, role. And then two was there. What was an indicator of that for me is they were making the official transition from being print to being a to primarily digital. digital publication. Mm. And I felt as though that is going to require kind of like new eyes and new energy because yeah. I've been in this role and trying to unwind all the things that I'd learned 
and or, or try try to trying to apply to this new medium. You know what I mean? I was like, I, I don't think that I'm the person like, to do that's that. That's not your job. It's like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. not yeah. it's not my job there, to deal with. There's yeah. somebody there's somebody else that's better suited than me. Somebody who's ready to Yeah. 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 So so Facts. yeah. I I, I that's, did. that's admirable because people hold on to positions and yeah. end up fucking things Man. up. I I was also really, really <clears throat> afraid of of prematurely becoming an OG. I'll be honest with you. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. There, there's not because in, in in SA you hit the ceiling so quickly. You know, we're we're a relatively small country and an even smaller industry. It's very small and, industry. And and so I was like, man, I've I'm whatever 25 at this time, and I've been here for six years or six or seven. And years. that's OG status that's in OG, our you know in I mean? our industry. Like, yeah, yeah. You are OG now. And, it's like and, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, man, I I I want to challenge myself in a environment that I'm not familiar with, mm-hmm. um, uh, acquire new skills, uh, learn a new way of thinking. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, there's this like, uh, interview that Tyler Creator did like ages ago. And he said, man, it, it's, it's hilarious, but I understood the messaging. He said, you know, remember throwback Thursdays, like on, on Twitter, yeah, 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 some yeah, people yeah. used to do throwback Thursdays. He said, yo, well, if you look around all the, all the guys who do throwback Thursdays are the guys whose best days are behind them. You know, and it's like because yeah. he he was like yo because why why how do you have time you're trying to, to relive, celebrate yeah, yeah it's like how do you have time to celebrate and so Ouch. and rekindle all of this if you're looking forward you know yeah and it's like of course that's like he was using exaggeration to bring his point across but I it was something that like imprinted in my brain and I thought man it, it is really easy to just be comfortable and complacent and especially when you're doing well. Yeah, and just allow yourself With to be what like, you've done already. Yeah, it's like it's gonna be like this forever, yeah. man. You know, it's like nah, I'm and, big dog already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, I just needed to feel uncomfortable again and being an unfamiliar, be be the underdog again. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so 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 I dipped and I was like, hey, I'm gonna figure it out. You know. And where does that take you? So I mean, immediately what I did was I uh, founded like my company. It was it was called uh, Breakfast for Dinner. <laughs> Breakfast for dinner. Yeah, That's fire. and uh, it's like I, a rock band type of name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it it was informed that that thing was like it was informed by my early days at hype because I was like during that period I was a student or whatever. You know, you, you walk out, pound the pavement, come back at ten p.m. You know <laughs> what I mean? You whip up them eggs, bro. It's like you know, <laughs> it was, keep it a <laughs> beat. Yeah, and so and so um, I, I I got to that name like that because I was like, yo, what I'm doing now is I want whatever this is, this organization to embody the spirit of everybody who's in that phase in their lives. That's what we're going to do with That's this why, yeah. with this movement. And so I yeah. started that and it started off kind of like a, like a, uh, a vehicle for me to explore my own kind of like artistic aspirations. You know, I, I did a, like some copywriting work um, uh, for things like, you know, the Castle Light Unlocks, that, that campaign with the Travis Scotts and the, and the, and the chance the rappers break the, down what that means um, when, you, when you say that. Like, well, okay, so so um, it's it's basically what that was was it, it was a consulting a consultancy uh, 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 position. A lot of uh, brands obviously fund a lot of music events in 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 South Africa mm-hmm. um, because they have the money, and so the ones that operate responsibly seek advice and seek counsel from people who participate in the space so that they don't misrepresent yeah. the community. And so I, I was kind of already in those um, rooms and in those positions while I was at Hype. Mm. And so I got an opportunity to do more of that when I, I left because I was doing it in my individual capacity. Mm. And um, not not just me, me and a, a bunch of other people who, who, who occupy those kinds of positions. And so, so often I would do that, but sometimes it would be um, conceptual and, and and copywriting work in, in in terms of how do we communicate this, whether that's from uh, a billboard or through a digital campaign or through it's like right down to like the words. Um, and so I did I did quite a bit of copywriting work um, during that period. I did some consultancy jobs, and I just did them through my company at the time. I did. Uh, some presenting stuff, you know, the Toyota stuff that I did back in the day. Um, what is the Toyota the, stuff? The Toyota Live. I, we, we had this, like, live stream series. Um, okay. 
Yeah, it's it's the, the, so there was like a whole bunch of stuff uh, that I did. But what it grew to be, what Breakfast of Dinner grew to be, was an agency. Right? I, I didn't see it that way, but I was like, oh, I'm offering agency services. Mm. And so, um, yeah, the, I, then I officially registered it as an agency and started to organize um, relationships that I had with people, you know, at, at other agencies or commissioning agencies. And, and, and you know, I, I started functioning as an agency for about, for about two years before I met yeah. Vaughn. And then we started doing our thing together. <clears throat> Shit! Yeah. Where in all of this did you do Vuzu? Oh, this was happening during so I, hype. Yeah, yeah. I started while I was at hype, and then because uh, it felt like it was after hype, kind of. Nah, I, I was act, well. You still hype? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it started okay. while I was at hype. It was mm. just while I was <laughs> while I was at Vuzu, people didn't know about the hype thing. Oh yeah, so you you were a new face to the exactly. To the audience, yeah. but it's like you exactly know. on the ground. It was like you know, but but yeah, we know you. He's like, oh, Fred. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, he's a presenter. All yeah, right. yeah. So, so the 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 Vuzu thing was happening for like two or three years yeah, in the yeah. background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, so you go from being editor and chief, and then you start your own business. Yeah, is what you do. Yeah, that's boss nigga shit. That's fire. Yeah, I mean. Because niggas usually like want to swing from like one job to the next, like look for another job. Yeah. You went out there and started a business, which because of your experience, you were in position to be able to run that business. And yeah. Well, look, the, 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 public, the, the publishing <clears throat> kind of industry was in decline as well. Man. That was around the time that um, I think they closed down Rolling Stone, they closed down True Love, they closed down a lot of... Mm. that had been prominent titles um, mm. in, in, in um, South African media. Yeah. And so so print as a medium was... Was, was yeah. Right. So I, I didn't think about it like, yo, I need to find another... You know, you weren't... You weren't... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd also discovered my superpowers. I was like, yeah. I was like writing is just a is just a, a tool. You know what mm. I mean? It's like it's like a language that you learn. It's like mm. directing is a, is, is a language. Yeah. Singing is a language. You know what I mean? It's like it's a, mm. but like what are, what am I communicating? What's the spirit of what I'm communicating? Fire. And so I want to I want to learn other languages to communicate this. Oh, fire! And so, and so and so I was like, there there are ways that I can more effectively influence this thing that I'm doing and this plight and do what I was doing and hype, but with 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 higher impact and a shorter mm. turnaround time. And I and I learned right from the back end. That, yeah, you had that. You know, these are the people that make decisions, and so I yeah. need their ear. You know what I mean? I need their investment. I need their, and so I was like, and, and I mean, not to. I, I started the business. It was it was a brave. Uh, That's brave. It, yeah. it, it, it it was a brave uh, thing to do, but it was it wasn't successful by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it, mm. it, it wasn't like I started it and then immediately. I started making tons of money. It's like any entrepreneur will tell it's you. Never that, it's though. never that, though. Yeah. Right? So it was like it's the, the business was not doing great. I looked at it like I was building foundation. Yeah. Um, and and I, I wouldn't say that it was successful in like the traditional sense. Like, like <laughs> business, like but it was successful it because was, it led you to your success. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which, and that's what success is. Success yeah. is a journey. Yeah. It's not the destination. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's not like... I'm not winning because I'm here now. I'm winning because of everything I did yeah. towards the win. For sure. Yeah. So how do we get to stay low? Right. So so <clears throat> so we 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 ran Coalition Music. So the first two artists, we we always say, you know, they're like uh, Lord Cares in particular. He she we always say she's the Tupac of of of, of Stay Low, right? Because okay. She was the first artist that we worked with officially under okay. under under Coalition Music. Uh, she she had lived in the UAE for a little bit, and then she's from Kimberley originally. She lived in the UAE for a little bit, was going to school in Cape Town at the time. Uh, we stumbled across two or three songs that she had on on SoundCloud, mm. and you know Vaughn's conviction. He was just like, "This is going to be the first uh, the first artist," and he got on the plane, flew to Cape Town. Um, you know, convinced her mother to let us work with her because she was, I think, 19 maybe at the time mm. to let us uh, work with her. And so she would be traveling uh, back and forth from Joburg to Cape Town. Eventually she moved to Joburg. And, cool. and um, we started recording with her officially. We shortly after met Mars Baby, who was 
producing for Kiss. So they'd known each other from Cape Town. And um, he eventually moved to Joburg as well. And so we witnessed that dynamic and we're like, we have, we have something going here, right? Mm -hmm. And so from that moment on, it was, you, you know, all, all of our chips are in. And so how, how we worked is that we did the agency work, we did agency corporate work, and mm -hmm. we used that money that revenue as capital to, to the, sustain yeah. the record label. You know what I mean? Record, uh, uh, book studios, work with producers, shoot music videos. And we I, I want to say we did that maybe for a year and a half, two years. Uh, one of the clients that we had on the on the uh, agency side, Nampak Bevcan, actually, we had pitched to Rocking the Daisies. We'd pitched to Rocking the Daisies that is owned by pitch to them um, a proposal to be the title sponsor for Rocking the Daisies. Um, we developed a, a product, these canned cups that had not been done in the world before. And that's mm -hmm. how Rocking the Daisies became kind of like the first uh, n no plastic festival on the continent. Mm -hmm. And so that was through the business and the strategies that we were doing with with, 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 with our client. And mm -hmm. so that's how our relationship with they, they acquired Rocking the Daisies in 2015. And so we worked qu quite closely together under Rocking the Daisies specifically in those I two have years. a relationship with Fitz that's it, different. It's it's not bad. I'll say that. That's different. <laughs> um, That's different. Yeah, it, it 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 was very uh, superficial in the beginning. We were a service provider. Yeah, you know what I mean. Work. And so, and uh, so we 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 developed a, a relationship with them initially through rocking the daisy. Daisies did some good work. Uh, Dale Dereich, who is the managing editor, managing editor, the managing director of um, mm -hmm. we struck up a little bit of a relationship with him as well. And this was like right before lockdown. And um, he liked some of the work that we were doing in the content space, and he and he asked us if we could um, curate a few things for him. Um, mm -hmm. And so we we did a few jobs here and there, and over time the relationship developed. And at the same time, simultaneously, Vaughn and I were having discussions about what the future. We're on very shaky grounds, like considering um, the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, of course. And so, and so we were having conversations about what the future of coalition is going to look like, not a year from now, but five years and 10 years. What are, what are the moves that we're going to make at this point in our career that mm. are going to set us up for the next 10, 20 years? Fire. And um, yeah, that kind of just converged with this relationship that was developing with Nets. I mean, long story short is uh, they ended up kind of usurping coalition and we mm. became part of their ecosystem mm. and um they bought you all in exactly does it buy you in or buy you out because buy you out means they buy your right. company and then you go home right right they right exactly bought you so, in. so they they acquired they acquired all of the assets of of of, of the business mm. but in addition to that also the the the, the functions and the human resources mm -hmm. and so now what it meant was that nimes had an in-house uh, agency, a strategic and yes. marketing agency. And uh, we were also tasked, because one of the things that we spoke about was like, hey, we really believe in this music that we're creating. And yeah. and, and they didn't have their feet in the music business at, at in any way. Um, mm. I mean, it was starting actually, I'm, I'm, I'm inaccurate. They, it was kind of starting, they were playing around with it for a while. Yeah. And so we were already <clears throat> doing it. And so it kind of yeah, confirmed that. Yeah, you guys that. are knee deep in this shit. Exactly. You guys know it. So. Yeah, and we had, we had the credentials, you know, yeah, as, yeah. as individuals and what what we'd been doing, and so, you know, uh, immediately the mm -hmm. the agency was acquired, and then we were tasked with forming um, the record label that is going to exist under the Nemesis mothership. Yeah, mm. that's and which is that, that then became stay stable low. in twenty twenty. Okay, that became so. Stable. Who comes up with the name Stay Low, and what what is that? What does that uh, encompass? What so, is that? <laughs> so, so it's a combination of things. Um, uh, it, it's a combination of things. Uh, that we were for, I want to say, three or four months trying to come up with a name that would be representative of the values, you know, that that we want to um, uh, re represent, right? And so, one of the things was that um, there's there, there's a He's actually the uh, manager of of uh, the Marabi Jazz Club, which is one of the businesses under under. And his name is Trello, mm -hmm. right? And so um, 
we were always kind of like uh, joking around. And, and one time he said, uh, someone said Stelo, and it sounded like he said Stelo. And then, you know, I think Vaughn or Dale was like, hey, man, that's hilarious. Like that would actually be, and we, it was a joke for a really long time. Mm. But it sounded to, to, it started to sound more and more right over time because yeah. the, the discussions that we were having about the kind of business that we wanted to, to be, the kind of values that we wanted to carry with us was, was all kind of heading towards the direction of like, we're going to be the people that prioritize artistic integrity. Uh, we're going to be the people who prioritize high level execution, prioritize artist development, and we're going to let our work speak for itself. Fire. And so stay low kind of came to represent that is that the, 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 the tenet there is that, yo, we, we, we work hard. We, we do those things. We're really we those guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're really those guys. It's 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 we're 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 not uh fishing for 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 clout. It's gonna get to you through mm. the merit of our work. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be earned. Exactly. Yeah, and we're gonna be there because we deserve to be there because exactly. of the work that we do. Exactly. And so yeah, Stalo Stalo was formed in 2020, man. That's fire. Yeah. And so as it as it is right now, who do we have on Stalo? as as y'all's artists what what has it developed to become today right so so we're we're in uh, in independent <clears throat> excuse me management and record label um, mm -hmm. uh, business so we have clients on the the management side um and clients on the on the record label side i think at this point all but one are represented both in management and in record label but uh so we have lord cares the tupac of of uh of, of stay low shout out lord cares, shout out yeah. lord cares. um she's an incredible songwriter composer mm. um in the in the kind of trailblazing the neo soul space that voice is um, serious yeah too. she's she she's absolutely sensational mm -hmm. it's like everything about her kind of just aligned with what we were trying to do and so um uh she's uh just last year released her uh, uh debut album testament um mm -hmm. Uh, you know, incredible world-class production, um, the presentation of it, the rollouts. Uh, uh, Lord Cares is, is is one of the most talented people I've ever worked with. So we have Lord Cares, we have Mars Baby, mm. um, whose foundation is 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 R and B, but he's a multi instrumentalist. He's a producer. He's a composer. Um, we're actually rolling out his project right now. He's got Shekinah on there. Um, Fire. And um, yeah, he's he's also kind of. In the leader of the leaders of the new school in that of in the, the new R and B exactly in that in that space okay. we've got Shooter Coombs. Shooter Coombs is a is a is a producer slash songwriter composer. So he's he, you know Shooter would would never uh, blow his own horn, but 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 Shooter is sonically the architect of some of the principal uh, sounds in 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 South Africa. I know we speak about. We we so we speak about you know the the lunatics and the tweezies and the yeah. but but in this era, in that era, right? There was a kind of like an alternative sound that was brewing that I think um, it's it was alternative then, but it's not alternative now. But I'm mm. saying the, these these artists that were coming up in that time, like the like the Reeses and the and the mm, okay, do you know what I mean? Then yeah. the, the, the guys who held lyricism in high esteem, yeah, yeah, right, and and that when Nasty C came in Price City in the Price City era, it's like now those guys have become the dudes who are leading the pack now. Yeah, Shooter produced um, the majority of the album Yellow. Uh, Shay, I, Shane yeah, Eagle I was gonna Yellow. say the the Shane Eagle. The, exactly, he yeah. produced it and he created he he curated it sonically as well. Shooter had, Shooter had never had never officially released music prior prior to that. He never officially he wasn't even a beat maker, right? He learned Damn. he learned that ability because when you are a small indie organization, yeah, everybody has everybody five six has jobs, to. right? Yeah. And it's like you know how it is. It's hard to get beats when nobody knows you and you don't have racks and you don't. And it's like Shooter Thanks. taught himself that. Shooter taught himself that. Shit. Produced and curated this album, put it out, and it. Uh, and, that's if, a, and that's an ego classic. No? That, that, that's that's the ego that's classic. A if you ask me, classic. Yeah. And and, and uh, he and put it out and won a summer on his first ever album. 
you know. Um, he's since gone on. He's he's also the principal producer on Soil, mm. uh, a pretty ugly album that 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 he has with his first album of the trilogy that he has with us. Oh, is that the white nigga? No, that's your thing about Vaughn. No Vaughn, I know Vaughn. This is like a Mars baby. You're thinking about Mars baby. Oh, he's the white nigga. Not, but well, Mars baby, he's he's mixed he's race. He's mixed race. Oh yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, my yeah. bad, Mars baby. Yeah, he's a day walker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, hell yeah. He, he's a day walker. But that's yeah. Mars baby. Shoot, shoot, shooter, shooters, shooters, a black dude. You know, oh, okay. KZN man, that's the, the, those okay, are your people. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Come on, shooter. <laughs> but yeah, shoot, shoot, shooter is is, Go is, is the is, shooter and the KZN. You know what I mean? The job is now going on. <laughs> it's kinda. <laughs> Yeah, shoot, shoot is that dude, man. He's it's he's he's the sonic ar- 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 architect of. Ar- so he's the heart of the of stay low. Absolutely, sonically, seems, yeah. he he set that foundation for us. But That's fire. but he's gone on to do you know to work with the pretty uglies and work with the Tyson Civitellis and the and the words and like all these guys that like I said hold r- lyricism in high esteem. He's kind yeah. of like the like one of the OGs in that pocket of yeah. of, of, of That's music. That's a fire pocket too. Yeah, he's got a project uh, called I Was Overthinking This that came out last year. So we have Shooter Coombs uh, and then we have uh, uh, a Zulu Mecca. Have you heard of Zulu Yeah, Mecca? Zulu Mecca, I've heard of. Uh, from the pretty, from the yeah. couple times that she's yeah. been on pretty stuff and then saw her on yeah. the Stay Low uh, freestyle. Yeah. Zulu Mecca is the best uh, rapper on the continent. Right now? Yeah. Zulu Mecca is the best rapper on the continent. Okay. I mean, you're standing on yo, that. Yo, quote me on that, bro. <laughs> Trust me. I can tell Zulu your Zulu tone changed. Zulu Mecca is the best rapper on the that. continent. She, she, she's, funny, funnily enough, she's impeccable. She, she's impeccable. I, mm. I've never encountered Jeez. a pen that surgical. You know what I mean? She's mindful. She she could go bar for bar with anybody. You know what I mean? It's um um and she's got an interesting story. So she's been making music for not that long. She's not she's been releasing music maybe since 2020 officially. She was kind mm. of playing with the idea and developing the talent uh in the background for a few years, but she's mm. also known as uh um Mandi Sanduna. So she's 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 an actress. Uh, with a really big profile, she's got shows. Oh, she, she's an actress. Yeah, she's got shows on 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 the Disney uh, uh, Channel on Netflix. Oh, that's crazy! Um, you know, and so I didn't know that. Yeah, so she's been doing. She's more, I would say, more popularly known as an as an actress as Mandy okay. Sanduna. Um, and then has bars like that. You know what I mean? That's it's nuts. It's, it's it's crazy. And then and then she's kind of been honing this. We've dropped two EPs with her, um, but we're dropping more music with her this year. And Fire. also um, her debut album. Um, shout out Zulu Mecca. Yo, shout out Zulu Mecca, man. Um, and then we have, uh, so that's Mars Baby Lord, Kez, Shooter Coombs, uh, Zulu Mecca. We mm-hmm. have uh, uh, an artist that we've just uh, signed named Hannah Ray. I have no description for her. It's the kind of thing that you just need to experience. She's not released a single song in her life, um, mm-hmm. but she's going to be a really big artist, really talented, kind of in the in the commercial pop space her sound is really big and orchestral um and then of course pretty ugly we've been working with for the 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 past three four years Mm. um we we after his ambitions right 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 we (laughs) we we we, we collectively take a lot of pride in being able to um position him uh i I mean pretty ugly i always thought pretty i've known pretty for over 10 years i always thought he was so talented and he and he didn't get the credit that he deserved facts um and our and and we felt really strongly about this estelo and we were just like this we are going to work together to position to make this, this pretty ugly yeah, thing yeah. work uh, absolutely and so mm. we started that journey with him with soil um released mud and completed the trilogy with what i mean is at least the best Hip hop album. It's 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 only January, you know. So I'm I'm curious of to see the, how yeah the, how yeah the world. he's put the bar like right. Um, I'm I'm curious gonna to see be tough. how 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 the year is going to progress. Mm. But but it's uh, he's he's raised that bar. Yeah, and, no, um, that project is crazy. Yeah, and 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 uh, so 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 pretty ugly. We've been working with that long, and then and then Buntle Mudisele. You know, Buntle yes. Mudisele under is under our because they come as a as a household. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, that, not really. Uh, not really. Uh, we're working on the deal with Africa. Now I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing, but it's it. It actually started with Pretty Ugly, you know, yeah. because traditionally we we were a record label. Yeah. And um, you know, their husband and wife and Buntle is doing her thing. She's been 
you know, the the biggest name in, in, in dance and choreography on the continent for many years. Yeah. And and um, we saw that as an opportunity, she saw some alignment, she saw some alignment with what uh, the network that we were able to expose her to. And, yeah. and so we started working with her after we started working with Pretty. And so, mm. um, yeah. That, well, that's, you guys are the ones who got the, the Rock Nation branch tickets. So, so yeah, our, our, our managing, I can't even take credit for that. Our, our managing director, uh, uh, that's crazy. Dale is, is he, his network is, is, is he's universal. He's a big dog. In yeah. There. Yeah. He's, his but network is, is global. The skin is like, got something to play with. He's, he's, he's singularly the most important person in, uh, the entertainment industry on the continent. Shit. I also want to go, guys. <laughs> this is the thing. Yo, I, I didn't even make it, man. So you know, it's <laughs> yeah, I guess. Hey, that's <laughs> da, fair. Da, da. But 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 it 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 it's, it was an opportunity that just made sense. I mean, mm. Buntle's Buntle's uh, uh, profile, profile her, her, is... her, her repertoire, yeah. um, her accolades. Um, I think they 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 speak for themselves. Whenever we work with artists, either on the management in a management uh, a capacity or in a record label capacity, our goal is for uh, people to understand. Uh, uh, who they are. We have so much, in general, in South Africa, we have so much uh, uh, talent, bro. We have mm. so much unearthed yeah, talent. Yeah, like raw talent. Who, they, mm. there's, there's also kind of this, uh, I, we've been living in this days of like this weird like inferiority complex, I think as well, where, but but it's only because we're, we're just here in South Africa, right? It's mm. like, but when you travel the world, it's like there's never been more eyes and ears on this territory than they are now. Yeah, you know, and we're, we're 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 starting with the guys that we um, uh, work with internally, but the plight for Stalo is really to solidify that relationship between um, South African talent and the rest of the world. It's like connecting those dots because for a really long time in the industry, it's been one way. We've created fertile soil for international acts to come to South Africa and get it and get a bag to mm. do shows at the Dome to. Um, uh, get endorsements and really plant their 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 feet here, which is fine. You know, we, mm. we we've been been, been influenced. This, it, we've been influenced by um, uh, uh, Western civilization in terms of the media that we consume for a really long time, and we're part of the world. This is what globalization yeah, is, right? Here. But but that relationship needs to start being more symbiotic. So it's like it's been one way for uh, yeah, uh, for a really long time, mm. and what. We're just doing a stalo is is going like it's look at what also. this territory has to offer, you yeah. know, and, and 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 starting with these this, these handful of guys that we really believe in and that we know can stand next to any talent on any global platform. That's fire. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's super dope. Um, I guess to wrap up the the stalo convo would be, uh, what's the is this is he Stalo? He is, right? The the venting song was about y'all. I mean, I, I don't know what... what uh, man, I'll be honest with you. What do you mean? You tapped out? <coughs> you, don't, you don't tap... So, but wait, but he, he is one on Z Stalo? He signed to us on... Um, so we initially started working with... Issues, um, and he was signed to record label and management. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he decided that he didn't want to work with us anymore. Immediately, re we released him from the management contract, um, and but he still signed to us under the record label. So, wh what what's that about? Like, w wait. So he decided that what when before you guys had put out anything, or were you guys part of anything that no, he put we, out? We we put out. Uh, uh, South Beat Housing Plus. Anxiety Plus. Okay. Right. We, we, okay. we put out South Beat Housing uh, uh, together, and uh, sometime after that, he decided that he didn't want to work with us. Where did that stem from? Anymore. Do you um, think? Or I mean, I, I what don't, were the conversations? I don't, I don't want to speak about it too much because it is a legal matter. At, 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 of at course. This stage, it, is yeah. a, it is a legal matter at this stage, but... Um, yeah, he 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 decided that he didn't want to work with us anymore, and so mm. we 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 severed the management ties. But mm. there's an entire conversation to be had as far as 
the investment um, that as a as a as a as a record label. That yeah, because I think artists have this this thing where, and I think which is why I'd want to have that conversation is because I think the public they have this thing in their minds where it's like they don't ever consider the investment that companies make into artists. So mm. then they just. Uh, kind of follow like yeah. whatever narrative mm -hmm. an artist will come out with. Not to say it's just not that I'm uh, putting out a narrative. It's just, I'm an I'm an artist. I'm on your side. I don't like the man either, but I'm just you know I'm just saying. Yeah, that's usually how it goes, yeah. and it's like yo. But this is also at the same time business. Yeah, I I, I respect I I respect that I. I respect that you bring up this perspective, you know. I mm. think that historically, you know, there has been um we 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 can't pretend like uh, uh corporations and record labels and 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 macro businesses haven't exploited artists. Right? Yeah, cuz they have. This this, the, 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 this has been going on since yeah, the beginning. Yeah, yeah, this of is time. the history of the game. This, yeah. This, this has been going on since the beginning of time in the music industry and beyond. Um, and so when, when, as, as listeners, as, as, as consumers, as fans, right, we are, are, are partial to the artists because the artists are the ones who we have a relationship with. Yeah. You know they're I mean? the ones who have our heart. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, they, they, they have our hearts, they have our ears, they have our, it's like you build that connection with this, with, uh, uh, um, with this person mm. and they work. And so their voice is quite literally a voice. It's like that's how they communicate with you. Yeah. Record labels and, and businesses, uh, mm. maybe for the better, don't have that. You don't build that relationship because, you know, you're with the, the audience. Yeah, the, you with, don't... with the audience, right? Mm. And, and I, wh while there is, like I said, it's like there's, there's a history of this that dates back to, you know, mm. the, the uh, formative years of, of entertainment. Right, mm. it's like it is also a very convenient narrative to jump onto because very. <laughs> it's, it's it's a very convenient narrative because yeah, it's believable. To, it's, it's it's believable, yeah. right? There's so much credence and credibility in this. Is like it's happened so many times in front of our eyes where artists have been uh, uh, exploited and and taken for every last penny. And and what I'm saying is that it's really important to analyze the information that we consume. Right, it's like because a lot of times these accusations and this vitriol that's being spread and all these critiques is like it's they're telling you about how they feel, right? Yeah, yeah, it's but, like but, it's but, an emotional but, but expression. But what are the facts saying though? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What is the business saying? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like we want everyone wants to walk around and 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 you know be like yo, I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. And <laughs> but this and that and whatever. But, but, but I'm saying what what are the facts saying that because we have surrendered ourselves to um, the process and 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 you know what's going to come out of that is going to come out of that. You know, I this is not an effort to I'm speaking about this very generally. This isn't obviously Yeah, this not, is a not, business discussion. Exactly. Yeah. This is not an effort to undermine or defame uh, uh, artists or or, or mm. whatever is like I I I also think that I'm and I'm just speaking for myself now, right? Yeah. And, I, and I go You know the it's like South Africa has a troubled past. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like we've been under an, an, an oppressive regime for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's not even that, we're not even that far away from, from the first democratic election. That was from 1994. That, a lot of yeah. people who, who unfortunately were victims, direct victims of, of that regime are still alive. Mm. Still right? exist. Yeah. I think that, I think, I think that it is, it is an irresponsible and exploitative to jump onto that because it's triggering. It's triggering to 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 to, to black folk, right? I'm saying mm. what's happening now is that there's a narrative around, about the big black, the big white man yeah, yeah, yeah. corporation. That's what they, you know they what I mean. Always be turned into. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, 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 and again, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, mm. right? And I say, and like I said, I'm speaking for myself. These accusations that are being leveled, that are being leveled against. Uh, stay low, or that are being leveled against uh, Vaughn, maybe uh, uh, um, specifically. Do they consider that? Uh, do they consider that that I run the record label? 
Yeah, because you're the what? You're the black man. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. Do they consider? There's a I'm, black man in the label. Yeah, because I'm because I'm saying I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not a guy in the label, right? Mm. I'm not a guy in the label. I'm saying me, Dale, Vaughn, Brick and Mortar founded Stalo. Yeah, uh, we were tasked mm. to 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 run the company. All of us have been instrumental in the strategy in. Uh, building the foundation as far as the values in the business in in, in, in the business we all sign things off there's nothing mm. that happens that is out of my purview right so yeah. so so what I'm saying about this this uh, very convenient narrative that is is and and from a consumer and audience perspective is like I don't I don't blame you right because it's like as soon as this very sensitive matter is 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 likened to like yo look at what these people have been doing to us mm. for mm. for 50 years for 100 years it's yeah. like yo that's it, it's a very triggering thing so we go oh yeah. here we go again right it's like the me too movement when when girls just started to say we're just going to believe the girls it's, it's a similar like right. attachment it's like because this has been going on for so long yeah. Like as soon as somebody puts up their hand and says, "This is what's happening to me," it's like we're yeah. ready to rally behind yeah. it. That's that. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a complex thing. It's a it's a, it's a very like complex mm. thing to unpack. You know, I, I, I as as far as like what I'm talking about, I'm just saying that it's it's there. There's there's no there's nothing that goes on in Stalo that I don't know about. There's nothing that goes on in Stalo that. We don't collectively sign off. There's nothing and that, that goes isn't on. above board. Yeah, and 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 I, and I'm saying like, what do I look like as a as a as a as a black, as a man, black right? man? What do yeah. I look like as a black man moving shady, right? What yeah. do I look like as somebody who who's been doing this from jump, right? It's like my rap sheet is impeccable. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like it's like it's like it's like a good rap I, sheet. My, my 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 rap sheet is impeccable. I've yeah. I've been. You know what I mean? I you've done good business. Do you know what I mean? I I I, I challenge anybody to I cha I challenge anybody to put their hands up and say, "Yo, this man, a time this where... man defrauded me." You know mm. what I mean? This man uh, 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 leveled, you know, uh, accusations against me. This man, it's like it's like I don't do business like that because everything mm. I do is founded on 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 uh, uh, integrity as a value. Our yeah. value system dictates everything that we do, and so. And and this is this is not a stay low conversation. This is a this, this is a me a conversation, conversation right now. Yeah, and, I'm, and, 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 and I'm saying collectively we 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 run this label. I'm saying I I came up with every, I'm saying even news right It's like because that's the rapport that we had at some point. It's like mm. I came up around the time of of, of everybody the Coolies and the Caspers and the Keenans and Cash Times and in the next generation with the nasties and the Reeses and yeah, to and this generation shames, with, yeah. the, with the Kezes and, and, and whatever. It's like, I'm saying, I, I, I challenge anybody to, to come forth and, 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 and I'm saying that is something that is like not considered because I'm going back to what I was saying. It's like, what are the facts saying? What is the information saying? What is yeah. the business saying? I don't want to hear about how you feel. That, that, we'll let you guys do the, biz the law on that. And then you can come back and tell us. Yeah, when yeah. He also, of course, I've invited him to come yeah. in and not just speak on that. Obviously, yeah. I want to cover Zishnu's uh, career and yeah. his life. Yeah, I mean, and, and 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 there's respect there. Like I said, it's like yeah. the reason we we wanted we wanted to work with one another to begin with is because there's there was a mutual respect there. There was a mutual reverence. You know, we brought something to the table as he did, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like. Because of things that have nothing to do with business, we find ourselves in this, in the, in this position. But it's yeah. it's I take that personally is what I'm saying. I'm saying as Fred, I take. How that, can you avoid that? I, I, I take that personally mm. because, um, it's it's a a a very it's a, like I said, it's a very ser serious allegation, but it's an indictment on my character. Yeah. It's personally, yeah. I know. I know it looks like we're they're singling out, like you know. What I'm saying it's in diamond on my character personally, because we run Stalo. Yeah, you know what I mean. We we we. And you pride on self we, on doing good absolutely. business. We've never done bad business in our lives. It's like the the laws of the universe are sublime. Do you know what I mean? Like Facts. what 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 you put out, mm -hmm. you get back. Yeah, you know what I mean. We just don't operate that way. But you know, it's it's um like I said, it's it's we we don't want to hear about how you feel. You know what I mean? We want mm -hmm. to hear about what's on the papers. 
exactly. And so that that's the position that we take. That's fair. Uh, I think I'm not too much allowed to do chops that go on for like two hours or any longer anymore because because <laughs> the consumer also. But there's so much here. Like there's so much meat in this conversation. Uh, pause. <laughs> That that we could get into. I'm sure we could even stretch it for a whole another hour. But to round it up, I saw, <clears throat> and I think you could speak to this just in closing to the audience. Uh, I saw Uber Eats. She now works at Hype. Funny enough, uh, she they were talking about. I think this was this all on Twitter. Her and some of her friends were talking about. We can't all be rappers. It's like even how we were talking about. Like you rapped at some point. It's like you yeah. you didn't become a rapper. It's yeah. like we can't all become rappers. It's like in an entourage of people who are about the culture and who live it. I feel like people should know and realize that there's so much more to do in the culture and to to be able to participate and add value to the culture. Absolutely, man. Uh, what is your, I guess, message to the people at home in closing? And then maybe you can toast us out. I'll pour <laughs> some shots. Um, I mean, yeah, that that I agree with that, that, that sentiment. Um, I think that... What we're doing at at Stain Entertainment at 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 Stalo is 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 an embodiment of that, man. You know what I mean? It's like like all of us. I, I think as 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 South Africans, man, it's like we we know our potential. You know what I mean? We know our potential. We know the level of talent that's mm. um, that 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 exists in this in this territory. But it's felt like we've been kind of incubated in this. Um, space for like a, a a really long time you know mm. um and we can all contribute to that mm. we don't and we don't have to contribute to it in the same way yeah. right all of us can have can have a uh, um, a piece of that and equally just as important roles yeah absolutely. or if not even more important roles than yeah. being the right the celebrity play rapper. play 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 to your strengths it's like that's how i think about it is is play mm. to your strengths you know what I mean? There, there, there's something that you can do uniquely well, right? That many others can't do. Yeah. It's like, how do you repurpose that skill um, to serve the space that you operate in? You know what I mean? My, my uh, like proclivity aren't going to be the same as yours, aren't going to be the same as the next dudes or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? But it's like, there's a lot of work f uh, um, for us to do, right? As, as as South Africans in terms of like what our potential is, like what the seating is versus where we are, right? This is, in, in my opinion, this is not the, we're, we're, this is not the time for us to be like bickering and going back and forth or whatever. True. It's like, let's keep, let's keep the, the, the goal in Focus perspective. Focus on the mission. Right. It's like, yeah. le let's keep that in perspective. It's like, we're, we're arguing over crumbs and, you know, it's like, it's like, yo, that's, it's, it's not the time for that, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a bigger mission here. There's a, there's a collective national plight. Mm. Um, we're the only people that don't think about, um, the, the reputation that South Africans have in the rest of the world yeah. is, is insane. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's insane. And it's like, I think like we only, you only get to appreciate it when you leave and you see how like we're perceived out there and then we come back and it's like, damn, like we got to. It's like, yo, we sleeping on yeah, we, this. We, we, we should be exactly. we're, we're, on we're, it. We're sleeping, we're sleeping on ourselves. And so mm -hmm. it, the industry needs everything. The industry needs lawyers. The industry needs Facts. copywriters. The industry needs managers. Mm -hmm. um, we certainly need to put. A&Rs. Yo, we, we need we, A&Rs. We, we, need, we, we need artist development. I know all the labels have closed down there. Artist development. Artist development also and, is and, lacking on a crazy and, and level. Replaced it with social media agencies, but we 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 in order to realize our potential artistically, we need that. We 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 need mm. to put out the best representation of what we have to offer over here. We need we need stylists. We need production companies. We need all of it. It's like it's the world has never been more fertile as an opportunity for us to present ourselves to it. You know mm. and. Um, there's, there's, you know, figure out what you do well. Figure out what you do well and, and how you can and repurpose do it that, well. you know, to, to, to serve the mm. space, you know. Yeah. I love that. Uh, so everybody out there, pick up a tool and let's, let's get to work. Thank you, big dog. You ready to make me do this? Hell yeah. <clears throat> Respectfully. <laughs>
Appreciate you, big dog. That was that was fire. You gave us a, a lot of gems in there. I hope you guys will love and appreciate that conversation. Chopping it with Bruda T, uh, Fred Kayembe. Had to add, end it with that one because it's like you talked some big dog Only shit. Doing this for Hell yeah. Thank you. Woo woo. Shit, that was a chop, big dog. Chop.